Hello and welcome to Front End Horse Live. I am joined by my good friend, Chris Ferdinandi. Chris, how's it going, buddy? Uh, it's going great. Thanks so much for having me. I'm pumped to be here. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm really excited for this. Chat is already uh, out in droves, absolutely. Um, got some great, great people in chat. Um, but today we are talking about ADHD. So like, I'm a little bit like trying to figure out how to place this. I, I'm, I'm already like not going through my typical thing. So uh, chat, if you're new here, typically uh, we would have someone like Chris on. And actually, Chris, the, the last time you were on, um, we built a JavaScript library, like, like our, our own library around dates and time and all that. And you showed us how to do a cool thing in JavaScript. Today, I don't even have VS Code open. Uh, we're not really going to be doing much of any kind of code. This is um, a bit of, more of a personal episode um, where you uh, have been open and public about your ADHD and you've written about it. And um, in your newsletter the other day, you included uh, a link to an article you had written as well as a snippet of a tweet. I'm actually going to pull that up so that I can just like not not just say what it sounded like but um actually have it here and uh i meant to have it up but uh i have ADHD. <laughs> no, sorry I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try to keep those jokes to a minimum today i'm just like haha but you know it it sometimes sometimes gets in the way of stuff uh but here i will drop it in the chat real quick um so you wrote this article and put out this newsletter and um it was fantastic it 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 hit perfectly for me in terms of like a self-acceptance and a um, just something that I need to be reminded of continuously that like just because you have ADHD doesn't mean you're like a bad person or like not smart or anything like that. But I don't know. I'm talking a lot already. Um, I, I don't know. I'm going to be an <laughs> awkward host, I guess, because this is a lot more personal than uh, I'm, I'm, I'm used to. But um, anyway, it's good to have you, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. It's great to be here. And to be honest, the last time I did one of these, not yeah. front end horse, but like a talk about ADHD thing, it was with three other people who also had ADHD and it was a circus. It was Got it. Just, Got it. It was like a bunch of squirrels running around in a tree. Um, <laughs> it's, I, I, th I think part of it is like the, uh, the, you know, the thought of like, oh, we both have this, so we're experts on it. We should just talk about it. And then you kind of come and you're like, oh, yeah. It's like also like tied to you. So it's it's not like talking about JavaScript, which exists out here, and I can kind of like poke mm -hmm. at it, and I didn't invent it, or I didn't like do whatever. So it's like I can judge it. I can say this is a silly way that we, we uh, declare variables or whatever. But when it's like internal and it's like, oh, yeah, it's like, I have trouble sleeping because of certain things and uh, it, it gets to be a bit more personal, but uh, that's why we have an outline and everything to lean on. Um, so I guess we, we could start with just like going through our ADHD journey if, if you want to do that. Um, yeah. But even be before that, I would li like to just say chat. Um, we have a nice little uh, feature. It's, it's a very bare bones feature, but it works. It works. Uh, if you type exclamation mark wonder in the chat and then like any kind of question after that, uh, your question will get grabbed and saved into this lovely blank screen. Uh, and as you populate it with questions, uh, we'll make sure that we answer them because um, keeping up with chat and doing all that other stuff at the same time and like, like jumping back and forth between what we're talking about right now and questions just based on the title of the stream might be challenging for Chris and I uh, to do and have a co coherent stream and everything. So if you have any questions about how we deal with ADHD, uh, ADHD in general, if you have ADHD and you're curious yeah, about things, or if you think you might have ADHD and are curious, whatever it is, any kind of questions, uh, just hit that uh, exclamation mark wonder and then drop it there just so we don't lose it. You can still ask questions the normal way and everything, but this allows us to not lose it throughout the stream. Um, this, the, the stream will broadcast in AD 4k. <laughs> um, cool. Already got some good questions coming in. Really appreciate it. And it's just good to see so many people. I just, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. So Chris, you were diagnosed, uh, as a kid, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I forget 
exactly how old I was. It was um, definitely sometime before third grade. Okay. I remember our whole, my town did this whole, we have too many kids, we need another elementary school thing. And like half of us went somewhere else. Got and it was it. before that happened. Um, but um, I think any teacher who worked with me for more than five minutes, it would have been really, really obvious. Um, so just Got as it. a quick, just to back up, because uh, one of the things that, that was interesting when we were talking um, uh, that I noticed about, or that, sorry, doing the ADHD thing. So there's two, back in the day, they used to have like, you had ADHD or ADD, and one of them was like, you're hyper, the other is you're not. These days, they call the whole thing ADHD. And um, they instead use kind of this subtype categorization to describe it. So you have the distracted subtype, which is I can't focus on things or, um, you know, my, my attention kind of bounces around, which is also a little bit of a misnomer. We can talk about that. Okay. Um, and then there's the hyperactive subtype and you can have both. Um, yeah. So I'm, it's a called combined. So I'm combined subtype. Okay. Um, I was very hyperactive as a kid. Got um, it. still kind of am as an adult, um, especially in large crowds. <laughs> and, okay. um, uh, that tends to be the type that is more obvious to people and easily diagnosed. Um, yes. it's also far more common in boys than in girls. Okay. Um, if you are just the distracted subtype and Alex, from us talking, got the impression that that might be you. I know you mentioned you are not really hyperactive yes, um yeah. that form of adhd is much more common in uh women and uh you know there are obviously some some boys or men who have um that subtype as well and it tends to be underdiagnosed because it's not as like in your face yeah. shall we say um and so you know people who have that subtype often hear things like oh you know they have so much potential they just can't like just can't get their stuff together He's you lazy know? Um, or something like that yeah, like, yeah yeah it ends up yeah. getting like chalked up to uh like <laughs> personal or moral failings instead yep. of like you know like an actual yep. thing but yeah so i was diagnosed as a kid this was during the heyday of like over um over medicating kids with ritalin um and so uh my mom never really disclosed my diagnosis to my teachers even though i think pretty much every single one of them knew um uh, and, um, as, as an ex teacher, I just want to say <laughs> mm -hmm. they did, they, they have, yeah, yeah they no, yeah. I mean, I've had one of my, one of my elementary school teachers, um, like her, her kids were just like a year or two older than me. And we ended up being friends later in life. So I'd run into her all the time. And she's like, Oh God, you so obviously had ADHD, but my boys prepared me for you. So you're That's good. Amazing. Um, but, um, uh, yeah, so I, am. Um, I basically, like never really had my ADHD treated for like 20, 30 years. Oh, wow. Um, okay. So the diagnosis. Uh, so I've always known like I had it. I'm, I'm sorry. I yeah, no, it's um knowing that I had it. I, it wasn't like a thing that was like really like I have ADHD. And as a result, um, and also like they didn't just didn't know as much about it back then. It was just like, oh, that's the hyper kids. And um, it was even like, like, I, 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 th I think it's a lot better now. But it was even like, a, does it even exist, or is it just big pharma trying to sell a drug to just yeah. kids who who have energy? And it's just... there was that whole thing, like all boys are energetic. That's that's all it is, and they're just you know. So um, uh, so one of the things in more recent years, they've started to like real they <laughs> have started to realize that a lot of um a lot of things are tied to ADHD, and um. I think one of the conversations you and I had was like, uh, it's almost like the, you know, the, I think you use the analogy of the movie, the sixth sense where you look back on all these scenes from before and you're like, aha. Yeah. There's so many things about my life growing up that make so much more sense. Not just knowing I have ADHD, but realizing all these other things are related to ADHD. Like a really big one um, that I think not a lot of people realize um, is, um, RSD, rejection sensitivity disorder, oh. um, or just even a, a tendency in general to be a little bit more emotional. Um, okay, interesting. Uh, I am someone who, uh, for example, um, you know, I would take like being dumped or, you know, that like that sort of thing, like really, really hard, even if it's like we've been Got dating it. for a week and a half. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. You know, um, would, and like would, just did all these like you? things about. Sorry, with that. With, would, would that stop you from even trying to like engage in certain things because you didn't want that like end result? Oh, no. Um, okay. Cause the other thing that, 
it is is very common amongst ADHDers is impulsivity. So uh, um, even if okay. like my logical brain would say like, "Hey, don't do that," Got my it. impulsive, uh, you know, emotional side is like, "Yeah, jump right in." Um, okay. with pretty much everything. Um, uh, so yeah, it's, um, it's a wild ride. And one of the things that I've found, um, uh, it's really just in the last couple of years, really the last maybe year, year and a half, because I've seen so many more people on Twitter talking about their ADHD and their ADHD experiences. I have learned about a whole slew of things that are caused by ADHD or related to ADHD that I never associated with my ADHD before. Um, yeah. and it has made, um, so much of my life, like click into place, um, and help me understand myself so much better. And just that alone has been pretty invaluable. Um, so yeah, enough about me. Let's talk about you, dear host, Alex trust. Yeah. No, I mean, um, what, what, what you said there at the end of like, hearing other people's experiences and like seeking out like good media on the topic, right? Cause there's, there's all kinds of like information on the internet. Um, but actually seeking out people who have credentials and look at studies and uh, you know, mm -hmm. care about the, the facts there and hearing, yeah, all these different things that are linked to ADHD. It, it has been really eye opening And, and, and like you said, yeah, I've, 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 uh, compared it to the movie the sixth sense so spoilers for anyone watching if you haven't seen it you just turn away for a minute will will, will smith. smith bruce willis smith is is his full name you, people don't know that he goes by bruce willis uh, anyway i can't even tell if you're joking or not no i don't know that's not, no. i don't know if that's true but i want it to be bruce willis is dead the whole time but you don't know it until the very end and then as soon as you realize the big thing, the big key, the movie makes a lot more sense. So like you, I, I think they might even do it in, in the movie where like they flash back to different scenes and like a mm -hmm. character ignored him or like he says something or did something and like no one really like responded and, and you brush it off in the moment as just like, Oh, they're rude or they're whatever. But once you know, Oh, he's dead. He's not like, they can't see him. It, it makes so much more sense. So for me, it was just like, Oh, uh, oh, um, just looking I'm, back at my I'm life, dead. just being like, oh, no. my God. Oh, just like every, everything just made so much more sense. ADHD was in the room the whole time. Um, like, Side note, I think yeah. that Omni um, Shyamalan has a really bright career ahead of himself. I'm looking He's, forward to seeing what he does next. Man, I hope he puts more twists into stuff because that is, <laughs> right? that's fun. That's a lot of fun. Right? Maybe a uh, twist could be about like <laughs> aliens don't like water, but they come to like a water planet. That's That'd be super cool. Anyway, um <laughs> <laughs> or maybe like people get old on a beach. That'd be, that'd be um all right. So where were we? <laughs> no. Um yeah, like like I honestly was always, forget. I, I I was always a kid that was just like disorganized, messy, like shoving homework papers into my backpack, losing stuff, uh, late for things, thinking like I was gonna be on time, and then just all of a sudden it's like, oh no, like I have to be at this place in two minutes and it's six minutes away. So I'm like running there just like always always like last minute kind of stuff um always very interested in lots of different things not not like like i i, I think the whole like uh you know first off we can just put aside like adhd gets a lot of jokes and i'm i'm okay with it like at my expense but like you know like there, there's the, there's the, the whole thing of like squirrel or whatever else y y you want to say um i I'm not a fan of doing that sort of stuff in general about um, a mm -hmm. disorder, right? Like, would that be the term? But anyway, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a bit interesting. In Germany, they actually call it a syndrome, not a disorder. Syndrome. Got which it. Maybe has a slightly nicer. So they call it ADHS there, which is nice. Has a nicer connotation it. to it. I yeah, think. but then it's the German accent that, that brings it back to, to serious and scary again. So it's... <laughs> My, my German viewers, Some of, I love you. No, um, um, well, you know, so along those lines, though, just so ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, is really a bad name because um, yeah. you don't necessarily have a deficit of yeah. attention. You just are really bad at regulating it. So there are times where um, I cannot focus on anything. 
And then there are times where I can only focus on one thing to the detriment of other much more important things like eating or using the bathroom, you know? And like, yeah. it's, um, yeah, it's, it's a real, um, it's a real wild ride. Um, <laughs> a real yeah. wild ride. It's, 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 um, it's an executive function thing where like the, yeah. the, the taskmaster mm -hmm. part of your brain in, in the front is kind of separated in, in, in some kind of a way from the back. Uh, like the the place where you know stuff, and I'm and I'm really dumbing it down here, but like yeah. just basically the executive function, the person that says like, all right, it's it's time to do your laundry, and it's time to get up and go walk, and it's time to do this, like that that mm -hmm. you're just not great at that. So yeah. your your executive decisions struggle, right? Uh, and and mm -hmm. we can get into details there, but um, yeah. So so for me, I grew up just thinking I was lazy. I, um, yeah, like, like I, I never thought I had ADHD because as you said, ADHD or ADD. And for a while I just thought they were kind of synonyms and they kind of were, but that right. Like, like the, there's been a change in the terminology lately uh, as where like it's been, and it's just my understanding it's been mm -hmm. combined into ADHD and that's like kind of the, the, the term we use now. And then there's just that two part. And so, ADD is kind of the hyperactive side of ADHD, right? Is that accurate to say? I, or I, I think it is. Other way around. Is uh, it hyperactive? No, <coughs> ADD. Uh, oh, okay, okay. Hold on. It might be. Unless I heard you wrong, which is anyway, also very possible. I, I think the main part is that, like, people don't really get diagnosed with ADD much anymore. It's It's more one part well and they did away with ADHD. the term so now right. someone who would have been diagnosed with add is now diagnosed as adhd distracted subtype oh, okay it's the distracted subtype. so Got you it. get like a sheet of paper that says i know we just went through this recently yeah, with yeah. like another uh you know family member and okay. so you get a sheet of paper it's adhd and then you've got the two subtypes and the one you have checked off or combined if you have both got it yeah, yeah. so uh, ADHD was always like the, the hyperactive type. And as you said, like just mm -hmm. not being able to focus, not being able to get places on time, not being able to, um, just, yeah, to, to have good executive function was just a moral failing. It was just that <laughs> I, I, I was lazy. I wasn't trying hard enough. Um, yeah. I just need to do it. So that was like the, the belief for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, and then eventually, like, like I'm 35 now, uh, I started therapy at the beginning of this year and my therapist clocked me the second I walked in, like pretty much like, like she, she, she knew from like the, the first meeting. Um, but for months she, she didn't say anything because like, it wasn't like the thing that we were, um, dealing with in, in, in that day. And it, it, it was like it's not something where I think a therapist is typically going to go, you, you, you have this thing and I'm diagnosing you with it. And, um, like it, it, I, I, th I think partly because you change the way you kind of look at yourself when you have that diagnosis. So like you, 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 you want to do it calmly, gradually with care. Right. So that's kind of one thing that I actually talked to my therapist this morning about this and just like, uh, a diagnosis isn't everything, but like if you think you have it, like do try to get diagnosed so that you can get treatment if you need it and all that. Um, yeah. But for for me, I, I finally got diagnosed, and I tried medication this year. And what'd I you did, think? Yeah. So <laughs> I was I was optimistic, and I'll I'll be honest. It's like um, it's it's one of those things where and and your newsletter touched on this and and I want to pull it up at at, at some point. Um, if you I, remember, yeah, we'll, we'll say. <laughs> I I I tell myself like you know don't don't get your hopes up for it right like with with any kind of a medication especially with like like a brain medication, um, mm -hmm. you you don't want to say like oh yeah I'm I, it's gonna work and whatever but you do get your hopes up for being like I'm gonna be normal now. Like I'm gonna be able to feel normal, and you you just you, you kind of want that. And your newsletter touched on that, where where the tweet that you um, had um, quoted, I I, I want to shoot, I want to see it. Um, oh, it's a longer tweet than I thought. 
Yeah, Delaney. it's a little bit of a little bit of a thread from Delaney King. Well, I will quote what 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 you, the, the the part that you quoted. You aren't neurotypical. You won't be. Their standards will never fit you. Just try to aim for keeping the ball of life up in the air with what you have. Your space will be messy. Your laundry never up to date. You will have doom piles. You win the battles you can. And then you say, this idea of, of self-acceptance is something I've really come to own in the last few years, but I feel like everyone needs to hear it for, uh, every now and then. And yeah, like I... Don't you just wish, or, 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 or maybe you do have medication that, that makes you feel more normal, but I wasn't able to find it. Um, and I actually like had to go off it because it was actually causing like panic attacks. And I'm, I'm not saying that like, like chat, like, um, or, 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 or anxiety, sorry. Uh, it, it caused like really bad anxiety for me and I never felt like the good side to it. So I just kind of said, let's just stop. Um, but n I'm not saying that'll be your experience chat. Like this is just me sharing what I experienced um but i was so, optimistic uh, i've actually never tried adhd medication interesting um <clears throat> i've wanted to, to we can get into this a little bit too i've wanted yeah. to but so um i have friends who have been on it uh who swear by it i have some who say they literally can't function without it um uh um i have uh like personal loved ones who went on it recently and it okay. took a little bit of experimenting to find one that worked for them. Um, and they're not even on like an all day. So I've got like some people who are like extended release yeah. all day. I need this to get through my day. And then I'll get some folks who do like, ah, I take it in the morning. It wears off around lunch. I just, you know, I get the important stuff done and then I can kind of, kind of chill. The important thing I've observed is if you find the right one that actually works for you, um, it doesn't, or shouldn't change your personality. One of the things I, I was always kind of like a little bit hesitant of for myself was like, I like me, all the weird creative That's, What's stuff. that like? I, what? You know, yeah, <laughs> I, oh, I just, well, you know, <laughs> you know, this is a byproduct of, um, uh, yeah, I, 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 my mom, bless, bless her heart. She, um, she is very big on like the whole, like you were the most awesome human being in the world kind of thing, which creates its own sort of problems. Oh you can God, end up being yes. a bit of like an egomaniac, but, um, <laughs> you know, um, <clears throat> uh, yeah. So I, I have, I have a, a good sense of self, but, um, uh, yeah, what I've observed is it doesn't necessarily change that. It just, kind of helps you shift that or can help you shift that attention in ways that are a lot harder when you don't have medication. Like, I know this thing is important. I don't want to do it. I'm going to do it anyways. That's something that neurotypical yeah. people can do pretty easily. And it's really tough for me. If it's boring, I don't want to do it. Um, yeah. And I've observed that medicine can help with that. Um, the, um, the flip side is it also has a lot of side effects and there's a lot of different options and finding the right one is largely a, like a trial and error game. That's what um, it was, yeah. And, and uh, the other thing is, so I don't currently have a therapist or a psychiatrist. I asked my primary care about it and she's like, oh, you need to talk to a psychiatrist. And that seems like such a small hurdle, but for an adhd -er, it's like this giant freaking wall because now I have to go research it, make sure they take my insurance, actually physically get in a car and drive there unless they do telehealth. Am I even going to like them? Now the whole social anxiety of like, shit, now I need to interact with this new person and I don't really want to go to this person every week to talk to them. I just want to try some medication and see if it makes a difference. Like I'm not dealing with, and I'm not, again, you know, I'm not saying you have to yeah. be dealing with big issues to go to a therapist. I know lots of people do it just as part of their normal self-care. And love that's, it. that's great. Love it. But that's not what I'm looking for right yeah, now. Yeah. I just want someone to prescribe me some medicine so I can try it. And if it works, great. And if it doesn't, let's not or try something else. But yeah, it's this whole process that I have not, um, uh, you know, I kind of, I hit this, what would be, I think, just a, a speed bump for some people is like Got this it. big brick wall of, of impasse for me um, because reasons. <laughs> Yeah. Um, it's been on my to-do list literally for eight months, you know, Man, um, contact psychiatrist. And, and I just, I went so far as to make a list and then never contacted any of them. Um, yeah. So that, I, I get stuck in that a lot of like, I haven't seen a general care doctor in a very long time. <laughs> I only started going to a therapist cause like I, it was like alarm bells kind of, or not, not, I'm not, mm -hmm. 
not alarm bells. It was like, all right, I'm really stressed. I need to see somebody um, yeah. for that. And that's been fantastic because, like, yeah, I, I can't – I mean – I know it's a popular thing that like therapy people like it, but yeah, I, I, I have been loving it. So, um, Oh, uh, Adam says big thing I struggle with regarding meds is tunnel vision difficulty disengaging. Yeah. I was wondering if I would get that for me, it was just, um, I never felt it and it was weird. Like I, 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 I saw some people asking, um, what had I had, what had I tried? Um, and I think they threw me through like your your standard Ritalin and what's the is there like a V one that's common, your Ritalin? And... Uh, v- v- oh, Zan- no, I just Xanax. looked this up they recently. No, um, no. Um, hold on. I, I don't know. I they they, they gave me the two Van- main ones. Van Vance. I, I did like... get Vivance also, but I'm thinking Vivance. of another there one. There's there's Ritalin and there's Adderall. Sorry, not at all. It's mm. an upside down V. Um, Adderall and Ritalin. I did try both of the those, both like extended release and like right now ones. Mm. I did try Vivance. Unfortunately, that was like three hundred dollars a month, so it was expensive and didn't affect me at all. And and then apparently, uh, and, and and another thing that can go with ADHD is that you have like um, a high tolerance for stimulants. And I'm like, oh, that's why coffee doesn't really seem to like do much against me. It's like. Mm-hmm. It's bullets against King Kong kind of uh, in effect. It's like, this is nice. I'm going to take a nap now. Um, yeah, I didn't feel much at all from anything. And then Focalin was the one that gave me anxiety. I still didn't get any focus. I'm like, this this might be working. I'm not sure. Because it's like, there's so many things that can go into like a focused day, right? It's just like, uh, mm-hmm. did like w- was the task interesting that I'm working on? Maybe. Am I meditating like around the same time like 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 ha- have i been doing self care stuff too yeah is that because right like it it's so weird to be like why is my brain acting the way it is right now especially when it's just like a little bit of a change and you can't tell if it's placebo but anyway um vivance for me i i never had anxiety in my life uh at least not around like but not unless there was a good reason right like ah like yeah. like, like th- there's an actual like scary thing but this was just like i'd be having a conversation with one person not even like in front of a bunch of folks uh and i would just be like sitting there just trying to pretend like i'm not freaking the hell out right now so it got bad i'm like this might be the drug this might be that and it went off and i've been fine but yeah. anyway uh just popped an adafan <laughs> nice uh nice <laughs> everyone chat shout out what you're what are you drinking what are you popping right now <laughs> no but i am caffeine caffeine for me i think um uh largely fills that kind of um stimulant need uh it's mm. coffee all morning and then i switch to pepsi at lunch um we are a pepsi family my dad used to work there i'm not anti coca-cola i just it's what I grew up with, all right? I'll drink any, I mean, I'll even drink like like RC Cola or like Amazing. generic stop and shop brand. I don't care. Just I, I love brown how you paused sugar to water. address that okay. as if chat was going to be like, wait a minute, is he just Pepsi? What's going on? Like that. No, uh, people I, I get think, really. No, I think people are well, filling like you go to a restaurant, this, right? this with lots of Pepsi questions. Uh, well, you go you you go to a restaurant and you're like, can uh, I have you know Pepsi or Coke, whatever you have? And they go, is Coke okay? Yeah, I just said whatever you have. I don't care. That's fine. <laughs> but but you have to understand that they're not doing that for you. They're doing that for the person where it's like, ugh, we're leaving. Get your stuff. Like there are those people. So I don't know. True. True. Uh, anyway, um, so do we want to talk? Uh, we, we we touched a little bit on what is ADHD. You did a great job mm-hmm. of out- outlining it kind of at the top. Um, I think I have a couple of notes here um, mm. where like, like I, I, I just had this written down because, you know, chat, I felt that I probably should for, for reasons. Um, Dear listener. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> to people with ADHD, sorry, to people with ADHD, everything seems important. It's like reading a book where every sentence is highlighted. Everything is shiny. Everything <laughs> is like distracting. Like, like everything can kind of grab my attention. It's It's not so much that like, I have a deficit of attention is that I can focus on lots of stuff. Um, do you like, like I, I will find myself uh, and, and chat if, if you don't know it, maybe we should pull it up. Um, uh, shoot. What is Malcolm in the middle? In the middle. How? <laughs> yes. Uh, scene. Uh, <laughs> shoot. How, how do I find light bulb? So chat, if you don't know this scene, uh, 
you're, you're about to. And, and, and I think this is a great, like, I've seen this metaphor or, 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 or this scene used as a metaphor in so many ways. Uh, but I think it's very good for ADHD because I, I do this like around the house. So let me just uh, share screen real quick. So accurate. Yeah. Like, like that, that, that will be my day where I'm, I stand up to go have lunch. And like 30 minutes later, I'm like fixing something in the garage. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I also do this like with like code bases or something too. They're like, I go to like fix a link and instead I go and update all my NPM packages. <laughs> I'm just, you know, you go through and you, you fix mm-hmm. some other button and you're like, all oh, right, I'm supposed to write a blog post. Well, uh, I just did a whole bunch of work that no one's ever going to see and doesn't really matter, but it got my attention and I kept going down that kind of a rabbit hole. Um, yeah, I've heard someone describe being in my head as being like, um, like being in one of those lottery machines with all the balls that bounce around and every ball is an idea and you are an excited puppy who's like, (laughs) um, Someone told me that once, and it was an old coworker back when I was like an intern in my first job. And I was like, oh my God, that is 100% what it's like. It was the most accurate description of my mental experience that I've ever, ever heard. It stuck with me like nearly two decades later. Yeah. I, I, I like, do you, do you find that you can like hyper focus on things? Like, it, it's not that you like have a lack of attention, it's that like you can get stuck going down a, a <clears throat> rabbit hole and just like, so we, um, back in March, we bought a camper okay. and we drove from, uh, Massachusetts down to Florida oh, and you back. did the trip and it, was, and it was awesome. Oh, nice. Uh, and then when we got home, I decided I loved it so much that I wanted to upgrade to, um, like a, a different kind of rig so that we could do longer distance travel. So got I started it. looking into like expedition it. trucks and truck yeah. campers for two weeks, Alex, I did exactly zero work and I spent every second of my work day watching YouTube videos on expedition trucks and DIY campers and traveling cross country. And that's all I did. I could not focus on anything else. Um, I got nothing else done, even though I had like a course I was supposed to be wrapping up and <laughs> Like, I think I even like skipped a few morning emails because I was so focused on it. Like it just, Amazing. yeah. And so you put if an it email really out like, if it's day. interesting and it grabs me, that's it. That's forget it. So back to my question: Is that yes or no? That's, is that it's a maybe? <laughs> All right, it depends on the day. You never thought then, about like, it. Kind of. You know, um, if if I'm not currently hyper focused on something, um, it's that thing you said where every page is highlighted. Um, you know, I might have three or four different things that I could do or more. And just literally the act of starting is the hardest part for me. Like yes. once I get into something, I can really dig into it. But starting is so hard. Yeah. I, well, so I, I, so for me, yes, s- s- starting stuff is, is, is so hard. Do you, do you find it difficult to separate out ADHD symptoms from just like, being a person symptoms like like just like you know like like because because that, that's been my experience like having been newly diagnosed with this i'm just like kind of going like what 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 habits that i have what personality quirks or whatever are mm. like part of this adhd circle and which are just like part of my personality like i i have a stutter that's not related right like, like, like that's like outside that circle that's part of something else I have all these yeah, other traits. Yeah, that's a fair I, question. And I'm I'm trying I'm, I'm constantly trying to go like, all right, is that in, is that because of this or at least affected by this thing that I've just found out about or is this 
something else that I have. Like I, I also suffer from like some perfectionism and I'm, I'm learning about that for the kind of the first time. Cause I thought it was something totally different. Um, and so like, I, you know, I it's possible that yeah. your perfectionism is an offshoot of you having ADHD that, that was undiagnosed and being told you were lazy for a good portion of your life. You know what right, I mean? Right. Right. Well, like, <laughs> Yeah, so like that's what I'm trying. Like, it's just like, is every how how much of the stuff is from it, this? I don't know. So I mean, it's tough to say. In my experience, um, being neurodivergent or diverse in a neurotypical world creates a lot of other kind of offshoots. So that's you know, I I um I I attribute a lot to my ADHD. But um, the the starting thing for me, it's um if there's something that I happen to find interesting, that whole starting issue, not an issue at all. Um, right. Because I just chase the exciting fun thing. Um, I am driven by fun. It's just the bottom line. I just, yeah. if it's exciting and interesting, um, like a dog with a bone, you just can't get me, get me off of it. Um, but, um, uh, and, you know, that excitement can happen, like, once I dig into a topic. So it might not start out that way. And then, like, I get into it and I really, like, you know, lock in. But, um, but yeah, for me, that's where the the whole, I can't, I don't know which of these things to focus on. is when none of them seems particularly more appealing than the other. Picking one, every single one of them seems like a chore that I have to get through. Got it. Um, and a lot of this is, um, like, ADHD is just a lifetime of chasing dopamine. Um, because we don't have enough of it, or at least that's what they think, you know, how brain science is, it's, you know, yeah. partially dark arts. Um, and, uh, so, um, you know, the, the w current working theory is that ADHD brains don't produce as much dopamine as neurotypical brains do. And so, um, you know, you're constantly in search of it. Uh, that can explain a lot of things, including our propensity for riskier behavior and, you know, things of that nature. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's it for me. If 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 I have eight tasks and they all seem equal levels of boring, I can't pick one. Uh, if one of them seems even a little bit more interesting than the others, that is all I'm going to focus on, even if it's the least important task on the list. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, sorry, I I did get distracted by a, by a little sound. There were, there was a thing, but it was I for a horses. phenomenal reason, and I keep forgetting to to, to call this out uh, because. It's it's a new thing that I set up uh, not during a stream. Uh, chat. We are raising money for the Trevor Project. So, uh, thank you so much for the donation, Rachel. Uh, really appreciate you. Um, right down. No, 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 point that down that way, chat. Down that direction. You should have a little button that you can uh, donate. So please, please, would love it if you could. Do I, I I need to get a better pitch here. This this pitch is kind of lacking. The Trevor Project is a fantastic organization uh we are trying to get up to 500 bucks so um please don't worry about subbing we would much rather raise some money for a very very good cause um but anyway thank you thank you for doing that really appreciate you um all right oh, nice bells and things can can throw you off but that was the that was the best <laughs> reason to get thrown off yeah. um <clears throat> so this is probably going to be the most boring part of the show i think but I was thinking that um, we can actually just kind of like skim through a very, very short quiz that is like an ADHD questionnaire. Now, now, chat, this is not like a uh, like, like m my therapist said, and I'm, I'm going to quote her, um, like if if you find like, oh, this this questionnaire says I have ADHD. This is not like a diagnosis, but like this is more like a guide to use to talk to a doctor or a therapist about you might have it, but having it and getting it treated are two different things. Um, and so I'm going to drop this link into chat real quick and then, uh, duo desktop there. Um, so just, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this because when my therapist brought it up, I said, no, I don't, I don't think I have that. Like, like she, she so she, she just <laughs> kindly kind of, because like I was talking about how like, oh, I'm having trouble getting stuff done. It's really stressing me out. Like. It's this whole thing. And she just kind of like calm, you know, like gently said, like, you ever consider that you might have ADHD? And, and, and genuinely I, I had, I thought, uh, I did. And uh, like 10 years ago, I like searched on like the internet and basically something told me, no, I don't like, so I'm like, all right, I'm just a lazy 
POS, right? I'm just like, ah, I, I, I just suck. It's, it's, it's not my brain. It's my, my, uh, get up and go spirit. I'm just not, I'm not seizing the day enough. Um, and so not carping the DM. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I need to carpe the DM more. Um, but so I, I was, I was like, yeah, like I'm, I'm okay with the possibility of, of me having it. And, um, and it's funny because I was actually, uh, I was actually an elementary school teacher for five years and special education is a uh, uh, part of the curriculum to get your degree, like just learning about ADHD and everything. And I'm sitting there going, all right, uh-huh. These people suffer. Uh, they, 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 they have this thing and this, that. all right, cool. This is good to know. Thanks for teach. Didn't, didn't like connect the two things at all, but, um, but yeah, she brought it up and I didn't think I had it until I took the test and I go, ah, well, damn. All right. That's interesting. So if this helps anyone out there kind of go, oh, uh, I, I think it could be worth it. Just because I, if you ask me in January, if I had ADHD, I'd say, nah, I'm just, I'm just lazy. Um, so uh, how often do you have trouble wrapping up the final details of a project once the challenging parts have been done? I have a lot of challenge there. I'm, I'm good at starting stuff. It's like the the final details that like I, I can't finish. I have so many like 80% drafts in my, in, in my note thing. And, and, and Chris, uh, I'm not, I, I didn't mean for this to be a, like, let's both take it together, but I, I don't know. Do, do you, do you want to comment on these or should we just kind of read them through and then move on? So uh, if we have any ADHDers in the audience, we do. We should probably fly through it fast. That makes sense. That 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 makes a lot of sense. Um, cool. How often do you have difficulty getting things in order when you have to do a task that requires organization? How often do you have problems remembering appointments or obligations? When you have a task that requires a lot of thought, how often do you avoid or delay getting started? How often do you fidget or squirm with your hands or feet when you have to sit down for a long time? Now, now remember, some of these are for the the first category, the uh, attention deficit, and then the hyperactive, or or, or the, the categories don't have that exact name, but like the ADHD part, it kind of has the two in it. So like you you might say no to some of these, and I do. I don't have the hyperactive type kind of at all, but the attention deficit part I have pretty strongly, or I have it. Um, so just because you're saying no to some of these might not mean that, you know, it, it, it's a no. Uh, how often do you make careless mistakes when you have to work on a boring or difficult project? How often do you have difficulty keeping your attention when you are doing boring or repetitive work? How often do you have difficulty concentrating on what people say to you, even when they are speaking to you directly? How often do you misplace or have difficulty finding things at home or at work? Wait, what's going on? Are, are, are you just... What? These speak to me so okay. strongly. This is... <laughs> if you want to eject Sorry. it at, at any point, I could stop reading. It's fine. I just, I just thought like, because for me, uh. I didn't, I didn't even know. And like I said, I was trained in this, like, or, or in, mm -hmm. like, I, I was taught a lot of this stuff directly in, 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 in a course. I didn't know some of these things tied into that. So I, I, I think it'd be a little bit illuminating. Yeah. So just as an important kind of like caveat. <sighs> So it just casual ableism here, right? So like I saw a tweet this morning that was like, when people talk, listen completely. Don't be thinking about what you're going to say. You should be able to like, you know, just like focus on the person who's talking to you. And like that is really good advice that is also like highly ableist. And I'm 99% mm. sure the person who like posted it didn't mean it that way. But like, you know, I can't listen fully to the person who's talking to me because they'll say something that makes me think of something else. And if I don't keep that thing actively in the very front of my mind the whole time they're continuing to talk, I will forget it. And then when they end their sentence, I won't remember what it was that I wanted to say in response to the thing they said at the beginning. And then I miss all the stuff that comes after it. And I always feel really bad about that. Um, but now I kind of don't because I've learned to just love myself for who I am. So yeah, <laughs> I'm just very open about like, I'm sorry. I missed everything you said after X, but here's what I was thinking when you said it. I kind of spaced for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Like I've I've been just kind of owning up to it more than just going, yeah. Good point. <laughs> and just kind of like trying to like fake back into it. Like, yeah. No, but it's like, yeah, well, I, I I lost it. So like related to this though, um, I've 
I've really come to um, I've come to appreciate, and I actually just saw someone share this in the chat too, like chatting with people who who are on the same struggle bus, right? Yeah. Um, I think Rochelle Rochelle yeah. mentioned like, um, it is so much easier for me to chat with other ADHD people because we're all just kind of bouncing all over the place like a bunch of maniacs, <laughs> and I never have to like explain or apologize for personal failings because they just they get it you know what i mean there's like yeah. kind of this um uh, sh shared empathy i don't know is maybe the right like it's just it's much easier for people who deal with these same things to just kind of innately understand it and not think it's a big deal because like hashtag you know they deal with it too or whatever yeah um, uh so um yeah i don't know i forgot what we were talking about we, we were doing the quiz but i think chat can can read it from there if, if they want to um, I mean, oh I, I was I a little bit busy. Like, I'm not even making that up. I honestly forgot what we were talking about. I was a little busy, Chris. Uh, just out of curiosity, how often do you interrupt others when they're busy? Uh, <laughs> this is why it's better for me to be a remote worker. So, oh, oh, no, like, like this, this is what we, you know, everyone oh. knew coming into this that it was going to be that. And I'm so fine with it. I mean, chat uh already knows my like solo streams are complete chaos mm. it is it is just true like, chaotic neutral <laughs> it, it is um uh, charlie from sunny uh <clears throat> oh the yeah, yeah it is very much that just thing. this Pepe <laughs> silva like i set off to do one thing and that that's just me by the end of the stream for sure so the interrupting others thing yeah this is why I hate office work. Like I'm, I'm very much like a remote work has been such a blessing for my productivity uh, because just like casual distractions in an office environment, especially like when everybody moved to like open offices, right? Just the worst. Um, you know, like yes. never mind people popping over. Just someone's having a conversation about something unrelated, three cubes over, and you hear it and then that's it that's you know broken concentration the task switching cost is really really high um, yeah do you do you kind of feel like you you, you need <clears throat> blinders in a sense for like certain, yes yeah yeah i need um i i need it's so it's one of those like once i get into a task if i get interrupted i get really angry because mm -hmm. um or like really frustrated because it's it took so much energy to get into it and then it will take me so much time to get back into it if i do it all um meetings suck like i used to just block out huge chunks of time on my calendar to avoid getting interrupted once i actually got into things yeah um uh yeah there's there's just office life is not set up for um neurotypical or neurodivergent folks yeah so like like that's 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 one thing that I uh, have recently learned is kind of like an, an, an ADHD thing <clears throat> is um, like being able to hold on to tasks uh, well, or, or, or so here, I'll, I'll just say it like, like, like it's, it's tough for me to come back to a task after a few days of like putting it on ice and picking up another task. Like I, I can't, mm -hmm. I can't have like a bunch of projects going at once and like, really effectively switch between them and in fact like um i saw a i saw a video on and and, and, and like i said like i'm taking every internet video i see with a grain of salt but then kind of <laughs> confirming it with my therapist or confirming it with like um, other sources but um they call it like adhd paralysis where you have uh something coming up where mm -hmm. like like in 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 the TikTok, the guy was like, "I've got a package coming at eight, so like I'm not d able to do a whole lot until that package comes because that's like the big thing that I'm looking forward to." And for me, it's absolutely that. Like I I will have a big event, and I I know I've got to like do something for that, or I've <clears> got to be somewhere by that event, and I'm really bad at scheduling up until that event, or kind of like boxing out and like filling in things there. It's just everything's kind of there and I either feel like I have all the time in the world until it's like 20 minutes before. And then it's like, Oh crap, I need to get ready for this event. And that's where I like go do my hair and I go and ah, like everything's a rush until that moment until I'm like smack up against it. 
but I've um I can't get ready. Like I've also heard or... people describe um similar phenomena on standby time, where um you know if it's one and I have a meeting at one thirty, I will do literally nothing for a half hour because if I get into a task, I will either get annoyed that I have to stop, or I will completely forget about the meeting and miss it. Um, yeah, but, like just like blow right through it. Um, I used to miss meetings constantly until I got an Apple watch, like they would go off on my computer and I'd snooze it and then forget about it. And now I have this thing on my wrist that is constantly like yelling at me and I need that. Um, yep. Yeah. Um, I've, I've been using an app called Cron, um, C R O N. It's a really good calendar. It's available on windows and Mac and they have a great feature that does a little bloop, 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 one minute before the, the, the meeting or whatever. And it's just like, all right, perfect. Like that's, that's, the thing like i need constant like external <laughs> reminders yeah to just like more than one or you will absolutely not absolutely yep. but oh you said something we're doing that thing that we joked we were going to do before of course the call. we're doing the but, thing um uh you know you mentioned the thing about taking um you know taking like random videos on the internet with a grain of salt i've actually had the opposite experience where okay. i have found that Shared lived experiences of fellow ADHDers are sometimes more personally resonant with me than huh. scientific literature because uh -huh. uh, studies and things tend to focus on things that can be easily quantified and measured. And a lot of aspects of our condition can't be. So for the longest period of time, RSD wasn't even uh, rejection sensitivity disorder or uh -huh. emotional regulation issues weren't really recognized as part of having ADHD and even now don't show up in the official diagnosis literature because it is really difficult to quantify and measure how strongly do you react emotionally to this thing? It's like a really subjective, right? hard to measure thing. Um, and like testing it is very difficult. Um, and so a lot of the newer things that I've come to recognize as aspects of my ADHD I've discovered because of just like random people on the internet <laughs> sharing their own experiences and yeah. enough of them being like, I have that too. I have that too. Um, that it, you know, becomes a, a thing. Yeah. That's a good um, point. I should probably loosen up on like my, I, I'm just very science based. So I've always like tried to <clears throat> make sure that I'm not just. And that's not a bad thing. Like yeah. you don't want to fall down a QAnon hole or anything. You know what I mean? But like, <laughs> The well, lizard the, people gave us ADHD. The space but, lasers um, are what gave me my ADHD, but yeah. You know, but... Um, um. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, yeah, it's a little skepticism is a good thing. Um, but, um, but yeah, I, I sometimes find, especially because a lot of... Um, a lot of the people who do the research don't necessarily have ADHD themselves. Um, and, uh, you know, in the same way that, um, you know, you see biases against women or people of color in, you know, healthcare industries, I think, um, you can sometimes see that against, um, uh, you know, various disabilities and things like that for, um, people who don't necessarily have it or can't empathize with it. Don't always kind of recognize or, um, listen to, you know, certain aspects yeah. of, of people who do, do have it. Um, well, I, I, so. I think the other part is that like this, this was a childhood thing for a while yeah that's where like yeah. the adult part like that's why i added like adult <laughs> to the title of the episode just because it's like for a while this was mm -hmm. just like oh yeah kids have that and then you grow out of it and you just you just get on with your life and you be an adult and you focus on stuff or you calm down or you do you know like it's just mm -hmm. uh -uh. i have so, calmed down a little bit i will i right. will admit my metabolism I, I, dropped I, i'm being facetious like like they're like i'm not saying like yeah just calm down no but like but that, like that that's yeah what it was thought to um... be just like oh kids have this and then they like you know they grow out of it they hit puberty or they do whatever and it's no so there's not a lot of great studies around adults with adhd so we're still kind of learning a whole bunch of stuff so that's why like yeah like as you're saying mm -hmm. it might be good just to kind of poke around and see what works for you within reason obviously not just like Hey, I think drinking Windex is kind of like the thing that helps me focus. Uh, but also cures COVID. So it does. totally, it, I, I still haven't had it, and I drink a shot a day. It's perfect. Um, I'm going to get like deplatformed. Uh, no, please, Twitch, I know, please, guys, not, not kidding, real, not kidding, spreading yeah. medical misinformation. Doctor oh, Alex no, says, no, uh, it's I'm, not. So, I'm sorry, Alex, I'm going to like kill your stream. <laughs> no, oh, I'm. The, if anyone does it, it's me. Um, <laughs> no, so, so like, so. 
uh, in it, the ways that it it af- affects you like like w- yeah mm. can you kind of like just list off s- s- some of those like how how does adhd i mean we we definitely have th- th- throughout the stream but is there any like anything else that it affects you know you? so the big the biggest things for me um so um uh i find um i find interesting tasks even if they're really difficult super easy to dive into and i find easy but boring tasks in, like almost impossible to start um i have really bad working memory um so i can keep one maybe two things in my head at a time um yeah. like you know that thing where um where people uh you know they'll, they'll just like they'll try to spell words to you if there's like kids around and they don't want them to hear something like i could never keep up with that right like oh, okay. i remember um you know like with like uh nieces or young cousins or whatever like adults would spell things and i'd be like s o r r y i'm sorry what was that you were trying to spell i can't i you know like i need to you know it's that kind of thing Got it. um okay. <clears throat> uh yeah emotional regulation always tough for me um i okay. tend to be a little impulsive um, and I ramble and go on tangents as this episode is probably made painfully aware, uh, to many people. Oh, good. Um, but those are just my experiences. Everyone's is a little different. Um, uh, you know, I, I know people who like struggle to do things like bathe and eat and brush their teeth. And those have not been issues for me. Um, Got it. but I know, I know for some people they are. Um, and I know some of the stuff that I find really difficult. Some people are like, that's not, that's, you know, that, that's, that's not a big deal at all. Um, uh, staying ca- quiet. I talk loud. I talk really loud. I talk loud. Um, I'm, I'm, yeah. So loud. Chad doesn't um, know it, but I'm turned way down. I, I talk way louder than you think. It's my oh, my man. neighbors can hear me right now. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's um, it's and I have kind of a bassy voice, which makes it worse because then it like travels through walls and stuff. It's really it's fantastic though. Solid. It sounds great. It sounds great, great on the speaker though, right? Sounds I got that really NPR nice voice. Microphone. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. I, um, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Know. And the flip okay. side is I, I honestly, I, I view a lot of it as like having a superpower though. Like, okay. Um, I, I would love for you to go into I, that because I, yeah, not I've all seen a lot of people and, and, and chat said it too. <laughs> I would love mm-hmm. to hear more about the superpower bit. Yeah. So, and I've talked to people who can't, th- so, one of the things I remember early on, someone in the chat asked something about like, can you still have ADHD if you never go into hyperfocus? Um, and I know other people with ADHD who struggle to ever kick into hyperfocus mode. But for me, like hyperfocus is the superpower. Um, it's also one of the most annoying things about having ADHD, but it is also a bit of a superpower. Like if you lock in on something and it is valuable, um uh or neither is not variable if you lock in on something and you're really interested in it um hyper focus is like like you just have superhuman productivity um and so one of the things i found is i generally have about the same productivity as my coworkers over the course of a year okay but i will have days weeks or months where it is just virtually like, non-existent yeah. and then days weeks or months where i output easily three to times three to four times more. You're a 10X developer on my, those days. My coworkers. For that like brief period of time, right? <laughs> so I'm like a 1X developer over the course of the year. <laughs> like, Perfect. I'm like a 3X developer for a couple of weeks. Um, and uh, like, I remember I had one year where I, I got like a year's worth of work done in about a month and a half. And then the rest of the year was me just kind of like <laughs> puttering along, not like on purpose, but like, yeah. I just, you know, I really struggled to like, to like find the thing that clicked after that. But I produced this amazing thing in like a, like a month and a half, um, by myself. Um, uh, uh, that sounded like a really like arrogant kind of brag and like way more than I mean meant it to, but, um, but yeah, no. And so I think one of the things I kind of, um, you know, like I, I sometimes try to, if you can find ways to like trigger hyper focus, that's Mm. awesome. Um, I know for some people, medication does that, um, for others like you, it does not. Um, but, um, yeah, yeah. Hyper focus is a really big one. Um, and then, you know, the other side of being, um, really like kind of emotionally swingy, um, (laughs) is that, um, you can have an incredibly deep capacity for 
like empathy and kindness, um, mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, in a way that like a, a neurotypical person might not. Interesting. Um, okay. Not always. Again, I'm making like broad sweeping yeah, kind of generalizations absolutely. here. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, that's um, that I don't, those are the big ones for me. I just, for me, it's the, the hyper focus is when it's on, it's amazing. Um, Got it. And then when it's not, it's a real struggle. Yeah. So, so like for, for me, I, and I think this is just like my framing about it. And like I said, chat, I'm, I'm, I'm new to this. I am uh, the rookie coming to learn from Chris. Uh, right? Like I'm just like, Hey, I'm, 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 sh I'm showing up. I, how do you how do you do ADHD like like how, how do you manage this kind of stuff? I've just been figuring it out, but I, I have yet mm. to kind of like see the upside to ADHD in in myself, right? So not saying there there isn't one, but I'm I'm still kind of like like I've I've accepted it, but I'm I still haven't found like my superpower in in that, or or or, or at least I, I I haven't found like a thing that I really enjoy about myself. And brought it into the oh, that's because of ADHD kind of like circle, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe it's just a matter of time. Maybe it's just a matter of framing of how I'm looking at this. Um, but yeah, I I've heard the superpower thing a, a bunch, and maybe it's just that I don't hyper focus to the same level, or I'm almost frustrated by my hyper focus where I go, <laughs> if I can do that. Like, oh, why did, why, I, I've been stressing out the whole freaking week trying to get this thing done and I couldn't, I couldn't even like start it. And now that <laughs> it's, you know, Friday night, I'm hyper focusing. Great. Fantastic. You know, like, like I'm, I'm, I get like annoyed at myself. I'm like, where was that Monday, buddy? Come on. Well, like, so double edged sword, right? So, yeah. um, that two weeks I hyper focused on truck campers, that was a real like, you know that was a real hindrance there was other other right, way more important right. stuff i should have been working on um but you know the other um i i forget the exact terminology someone used but so um <clears throat> uh excitement novelty and urgency uh are the three categories i heard of things okay. that will trigger hyper focus in a lot of adhders and so yeah. if something's not particularly exciting and um but it's new you know uh, you know, or not particularly like interesting to you, but it's new. Like that novelty can be a real like, all right, cool. Let me dig into this. It's like a problem for me to solve. But if, if, you know, just like general kind of work, you've done it before. It's not particularly exciting. Yeah. Um, the, the piece that often kicks it in for ADHD years is that urgency. Like, Hey, I put this off all week and now it's due tomorrow. So now I'm going to hyper-focus cause I got to get it done. Um, yep. And I and I could do it the yeah. whole time. That like, <laughs> I, like, like that's the the script that I give yeah. myself. But Claudia um, says it's a process. It takes time to realize and embrace your unique superpower aspects. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I like that a lot. Uh, my partner makes fun of me for picking up new hobbies all the time. If there is a hobbies field in a form, I think I need an extra page for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, I think most ADHDers have a closet littered with. Um, uh, you know, the, the relics of hobbies that they got really into for a week and a half before giving up on. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I definitely have those for, yeah, for sure. Uh, oh, or, or times. just like for, for us, mm -hmm. I think it's like repositories that never became the full project or something, right? Like mm -hmm. just a bunch of, Oh yeah. God, I have so many domains that I've been meaning to do Doma things with yep. for, yep. That's oh. like the programmers version of that. Oh, yeah. So <sighs> man, yeah. Um, do we want to talk tools or kind of like strategies at all? And actually, one yeah. other thing I want to make sure we don't neglect. I know there was a bunch of great questions that came in, and I yep. I, I love like chatting about others' experiences with these. So I want to make sure we don't miss Absolutely. any of those we, either. We will definitely not. Yeah, so the, <clears throat> the plan is, I'm going to drop the the wonder thing once more in chat. Uh, my, my plan is, and I, I, I have a plan, and I'm so proud of myself, um, yeah, just going to finish up on how it affects us. Then we can talk about like how we manage it. And that's like strategies, tools. Like I use certain, you know, yeah, tech techniques, specific apps and stuff, right? Like, as you said, Apple, mm. Apple Watch is kind of a godsend. Um, we need to get a referral code for that before we before we go talking about right. that. Let's 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 get. Yeah, it's kind of come on, Amazon ghost link. of Steve Jobs. Yeah. Hook me up. 
<laughs> it's a shame they haven't put anyone in charge since Steve Jobs. It's still just his ghost <laughs> running the place. I don't know what leadership over there. Right. Um, yeah, no, but um, f- so ways it affects us. One one thing that um, I, think, I think I wrote it down. Maybe I did not. Shoot. Of course I didn't. Um, <laughs> late for things. Nice. Scatter. I'm trying to get re- reminded right now of what... Uh, Oh, lo- yeah, so long-term scheduling. I-, I think I touched on it a little bit, but, like, um, yeah, I'm-, I'm really bad at scheduling past a big event. Like, right now, I have a trip to uh, Europe coming up. Like, I'm-, I'm heading out of the country on Monday, and I've barely looked at it. My, my wife has, like, planned a whole bunch of stuff and is, like, trying to get me involved. And I, I've been, I just have a really, really tough time mm-hmm. going past the thing I have to get done for today or get done for tomorrow or whatever it is. It's so hard for me to just like set this thing aside. And I, I watched a, a, a video that talked about how like I'm just like grabbing onto it and trying to hold onto it because it's not easy for me to just like put that down and pick something else up and then pick the first one up again. I, I've like learned that I need to like grab on, hold on, because otherwise mm-hmm. it's it's just kind of gone. And and yeah, like I'm bad at like coming back to projects after a while. It feels like, uh, like like my my progress is slowed to a halt if I come back to a thing after like a few days, and it takes me like an hour to like speed back up. Mm-hmm. Do you, do you get that also or? Yeah, uh, vacations are the worst. Um... I mean, vacations are great, yes, but they're I the worst them. for that sort of thing because yep. um, you you come back to it and it's like that that warming up back into work is just so tough um, for me, anyways. Um, you know, like a couple of days off is rough, like a week or more. Forget it. Um, yeah, just done. And and the motivation. Right, like, like the yeah. whole thing, because I'm like, oh, this is gonna be such a cool project, and it's gonna have this. And I'm like, I'm, I'm excited about it. I'm getting into it. I'm building features or whatever. And then you put it on ice, and I'm like, well, that thing's dead to me. I don't, I, I could care less about that, and I can't get back into mm-hmm. it the same way. Yeah. So one of the things I've I've found for me personally is just, um, it's it's good to identify these like pain points and how they manifest in you because then you can come up with strategies to yes. work around them. Yep. So I've stopped trying to, um, I've, I've written about this a few times, but I've stopped trying to put myself into a neurotypical box of like, okay, I need to do this thing. So I, I need to make sure I start on Monday and do a little each day and then I'll be done by Friday. Um, and I, I instead, I, I found a little bit more success by recognizing the unique way that my ADHD brain works and I try to work the way my brain naturally wants to rather than the way, um, uh, a neurotypical society might expect me to. Um, and, uh, that doesn't always work. Obviously like you live with, you know, a partner or you exist in a society, you have a job with potentially coworkers, you know? And so you can't, um, you know, you can't like, you need to be respectful or mindful of that too. But um, yes. yeah, as much as possible, I try to, um, you know, just, so just as an example, right? Like mess doesn't really mess on my desk drives me nuts because I, um, I find it distracting and I can't focus, but if it's out of my direct line of eyesight, it basically doesn't exist. Like I could have piles of junk everywhere Got and it. it won't bother me. Like my brain doesn't even see it. But it drives my wife crazy. And as much as I don't care and I could happily exist with that stuff all over the house, um, you know, I need to try to be better about picking those things up because um, it severely negatively impacts her. Um, So, you know, those are the kinds of things where, like, you can't always just be like, ah, I'm perfect the way I am and forget everything, everybody, others' expectations of me because sometimes those expectations are valid and they negatively impact other people and you know you want to be respectful of that but um but yeah in terms of like kind of like how i work and things like that i've really um i've tried to just lean fully into how my weird brain likes to do things 
Yeah. Uh, uh, well, like, and, and, and what you're saying about like with other people, I feel that so much of it is just the communication and expectation setting, like right from the jump. Yep. Like if you tell me yeah. that like, Hey, I'm not going to be like, like I'm, I'm not the most consistent person, but I'll get the job done. Go, oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> right. Like, like, like just, just yep. that is like, okay. So yeah. like, I'm not going to expect every day the same amount of like, code pushed mm-hmm. or whatever the heck, right? Like like whatever metric you, you want to look at. Yep. Just just telling my wife why I wasn't able to like help that much with the planning for this trip. Like watching that video and then going, <laughs> oh, this is why I'm I'm like, I, I it just stressed me the hell out mm-hmm. to even think about planning this trip. I, I call her and I'm like, what? Let's look at this. This this is this is my brain. Like this makes sense now. She's like, Oh, thank you for explaining this. This helps a lot. I was getting frustrated, mm-hmm. but understanding that now she's like asking questions about like how, you know, like, can I ask you about this now or, or, or whatever? Like it, it sounds like she's walking on, on eggshells. It's all good, but yeah. it's, it's, it's just the communication. It's just understanding. Hey, I just learned something about the way my brain works. This, this might be how, I don't know. I need to approach this from now on or something. Yeah, even things like, oh, you know, Rush, get this to me when you get a chance. I will never get it done. If you tell me when I get a chance yes. and it's not super interesting, if it's like it. interesting, I'll get it to you like within a day. Yeah. If it's boring, I will literally never even think about it again. Or, or for, for me, if there's like high, <laughs> high stress of me getting it wrong or like it, yeah. you know, like, yeah, like if there's not a huge, huge like dopamine hit and there's just like, yeah. this is just going to be difficult and not that fun and all that kind of stuff. I'm like, I, uh, even if it's important, I might just like kind of put it off for forever or just forget about it, to be honest. Yeah. I've also had things where um, I have literally like, I put in a to-do list. I've set like a due date reminder. I get the reminder it's due like in a few hours or the next day. And even then the dopamine hit like, okay, urgent rush thing. You know, like putting together, like I need four slides for the VP on this presentation I'm giving. I've, I've just candidly, like I have half asked my way through those things because it's so (laughs) dumb and it doesn't matter. And like, how could, you know, if if I'm presenting, if I'm presenting, I will put a lot of work into it. But if you need me to make slides for you to present on the work that I'm doing that you should already know about, then, um, yeah, I'm probably going to half-ass it. And then <laughs> you can figure out how to talk to these slides. I don't know. I, it's not my yeah. problem. Slide I'm four sorry, is a I'm feeling emoji, like, Chris. Uh, can we talk about I'm, your performance? Yeah, <laughs> I'm really – this is um, <laughs> this is where corp, corporate America does not suit me very well. But – um. You know, yeah, uh, I, there was a point in there somewhere, and I think I kind of lost it. But, oh, good. Um, yeah, being respectful of how you work. There we go. That was it. It was, um, you know, rec- recognizing your own kind of work preferences and, and working within those uh, is important, yeah. in my opinion. Um, we touched on this a little bit, but um, to-do lists, I, um, uh, I've tried so many, like, pro- productivity hack systems over the, over the years, and... Um, literally the only one that has ever actually consistently worked for me is just a traditional bulleted to-do list. Um, if it's not on my list, it falls out of my brain. Um, I even heard, um, uh, so there's this great YouTube channel, how to ADHD that introduced me to this concept of bullet journals where rather than having like a separate notebook with ideas and things, and then like your to-do list, it's all one thing. And so, I have in my to-do app, I use Microsoft to-do because it's free um, and awesome. And I'll explain why in a minute. Cool. Um, uh, I I have separate lists for different things. So like around the house, uh, go make things, my business, um, uh, you know, vacation ideas. So any, just all sorts of different things. And anytime I have an idea that I don't want to forget, I pull out my app, which I have on every electronic device in my house or on my person. Nice. Um, and I throw it in there. Um, and, um, uh, once every so often it's supposed to be every week, but it ends up never being, I will go through and I just have kind of this, like where I throw stuff. I don't have time to like organize. I will go through and like move those into places where they belong. Maybe if I think about it, if I was using like a David Allen, getting things done I type wish system, I, I would could do stick that every with that, week, dude. but I right. Wish I could stick with that. Um, so here's the thing every now and then 
the to-do list just falls off and I yeah. stop using it. And I don't look at it every day because there are days where I know, like right now I'm working on a course every morning I wake up and I just know that's what I'm working on right now. And that's right. what I work on. But, um, you know, when I've got a lot of moving parts, it's very helpful. And what I like about Microsoft to do, which used to be Wonderlist before Microsoft acquired them, oh. um, is it has this my day view. And so okay. every morning when I'm actually actively using it, I will wake up and I will view the all to do items list and I will go through and just swipe right on the things that I want to get done that day. And they stay in there in context, you know, like the home, the business kind of lists. Right. But then they also get added to this special things you want to do today list. Um, and uh, so then I just look at that throughout the day. Like these are the things I'm focused on today. Got and I it. usually get most of them done, but not always. Um, that that, was and that can be stale helpful. for me, but it does. Yeah, no. Yeah. And so like right now I haven't actually touched that in like a couple of weeks. Um, Got it. But um, uh, I sort of, hold on one yeah. sec. Um, Finite yeah. uh, just rated us. Finite, thank you so much. Everybody from, from Finite, welcome. We typically talk tech here. Uh, I, 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 we, we, we build stuff. For, we do front-end development stuff. We don't talk tech. We're not talk the, the, the latest iPhone is not what we're chatting about. But uh, today we're doing a bit of a different stream. Uh, Chris and I both have ADHD, and we're talking about it. So we've kind of gone through our journey, talking about what ADHD is, how it affects us. And now we're doing everything's favorite thing of saying the little apps and the little like tricks that we use to try to like just <clears throat> get anything done on a given day. Um, yeah, we t <laughs> we talked a little about the Apple Watch, um, which is, I think for me, like the probably the single best tech purchase I've made in several years. Um, but um, the other thing is I, I work around my hyper focus. So if I'm having okay. a day where I just can't be productive, it's just not working. I just say F it and I, <laughs> I go do other things. So I will um, I will use that to do non brain tasks. So I'll fold, like, I'll do laundry. I'll like, literally watch YouTube videos while I do laundry. Um, cause it's interesting and yeah. it needs to get done and I can't do the other stuff or I'll go for long walks. Um, or, but, um, but just for the non self-employed people out there, I do want to say, do that when I was employed too, actually. Okay. Um, All right. Yeah. But again, this is where remote work is kind of Got awesome. It. Like obviously yeah. you have meetings you have to attend and things like that. But right. like if I was having a day where I just couldn't get stuff done, I would just not get stuff done that day. Now, if you let it go on too long, obviously that's bad. Then you like, you don't do your job and you can get fired. But, um, so I've heard. you know, recognizing that I would have like kind of off days and just be okay with that. Um, uh, it can be a very liberating kind of thing. Yeah. And I, I, I find that like, you know, you, you're going to have to, if, if you are employed for a company, you're going to have to find out like how, <laughs> for lack of a better term, how chill <clears throat> is, is your company? How cool are your coworkers and everything? Like, are they going to be understanding? Cause like, like you said earlier, mm -hmm. the typical workforce, <laughs> uh, is not designed around, uh, neurodivergent people who, um, you know, like, like have certain kinds of needs or, or fluctuations or wh whatever you want to call it. It's designed to like crank out X amount of widgets in a certain time and just kind of like be on, on a schedule. Yeah. So in, yeah, it, if you're on one of those two week delivery cycles, that might not necessarily work yeah. or it could, you could do like three days worth of work in one, depending on how your hyper focus works for you. Yeah. Um, uh, related to that, I think a topic that comes up often is whether or not you tell work. Um, and one thing I'm always very aware of when I have this conversation is I am a white, cisgendered, heterosexual man. And so and I'm always yeah. very candid about it. But, um, you know, I have a I have a black friend who told me he very specifically does not ever talk about it at work because he already feels like he has more scrutiny on his work God. than his sense. white peers to do and he doesn't want to give them another thing to like you know like oh let me let me double check your work because so he Got never it. brings it up that um, makes a lot of sense and i've heard similar things from you know like women or people in other groups that tend to have to deal with more nonsense at work um but um i have been very candid about it and in the times that i have i've often found out that 
other people that I've worked with or sometimes even my bosses have also had it and that has made it um, better for a lot of people. Um, okay. <laughs> not just myself. Um, you know, it's, um, it's allowed me to be a bit more honest about my needs and how I work and what people can expect from me um, and made other people potentially feel a little bit more comfortable about being themselves. So if you feel like you're privileged enough or in a position to do so, I think talking about it at work can be a good thing. It can also, if you live in America or Canada or um, one of the many EU countries that has laws around disabilities and accommodations, um, it can force work to um, put accommodations in place for your um, uh, your ADHD, um, including things like adjusted work hours or remote work opportunities or kind of not pulling you into so many random meetings or, you know, whatever you think might be a valid accommodation for you. Um, so there are a lot of benefits to talking about it at work. Um, there are also some, I think, legitimate risks, um, especially in a late stage capitalist society. I really appreciate your nuance there, man. That, 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 that was excellent. Thank you for saying everything you just said. No worries. Yeah. I, I, I have no notes. I was, yeah. I've been doing a lot of talking, Alex. I'm curious to hear about what um, what sort of things you do or what you found works for you. I know you're a lot earlier in your journey than I am. Um, you are the guest. Uh, I, I actually don't even have ADHD. I just thought this would be a cool topic. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Could you imagine if you catfished me for this whole thing? Just, this, this entire time? <laughs> me, too. You're like, yeah, I do the Me, too. It's like... <laughs> Yeah, this one week I got obsessed with camper vans. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I was like, that's specific. Um, no, yeah, I, I, and yeah, I'm 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 very much used to just you know asking questions and uh, and yeah. making sure that that you are carrying on the conversation. But um, for, for for me, stuff that that's been working. First off, the diagnosis of ADHD has been uh, kind of a it it's been wonderful for a lot of reasons and i think the biggest uh to, to bring it back to programming terms is kind of like uh i'm 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 constantly googling for like how do i put uh an an item into an array at a specific spot and i, I google that and uh a, a java answer on stack overflow comes up and i go all right i'll try this code that didn't work. And I Google again and the C++ answer comes up and I go, ah, it seemed to work for all these people, but this didn't work for me. And then I finally realized like, oh, I'm, I need to like add a little like thing to the end of my search term to like specify like ADHD or like mm -hmm. JavaScript or whatever, right? Like it, you get a very different result once you kind of like go into mm -hmm. your specific niche of like the way your brain works. Yeah. And so... Once I add that little thing on the end of my search term, or or, or, or like you said, you you watch um, ADHD. What's the channel? I'm I'm forgetting her channel. So there's How to ADHD is one of them on YouTube. ADHD, um, yeah. I follow a few folks on Twitter too who regularly share. Yeah. Um, awesome stuff. But like once once you get into that and leave a lot of not not all like I still think like things like Atomic Habits are very helpful for me. Like I I still like a lot of those sorts of books. Yeah. But like once you leave a lot of the like just will yourself and believe you can and 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 be strong like w like just walk over the coals like all that kind of like junk just it's so helpful it's it, it's so helpful to be like oh like like just the thing I, I I said where we're talking to my wife about like why I can't plan out further than this and just understanding oh I I. Mm -hmm. I'm not just like being weird right now. That's like an actual thing because of the way my executive part of my brain functions and all this stuff. <laughs> just understanding those things, I can kind of counteract it. Um, there's a famous, or, or not famous, there's a saying in emotional intelligence of when you can name it, you can tame it. And it's why um, as, as a teacher, we would make sure that uh, we're teaching our kids the nuance to emotion. Because mm -hmm. even between something like envy and jealousy, there's a big difference, right? Like we, we kind of think that that's mm -hmm. kind of the same thing. They're synonyms, but they're not. They're, they're actually pretty different. And the way that you would address them is different. And, 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 and the way that you like kind of cope with those. Is so like just being able to say, oh, I'm having that, that issue where 
I'm stuck mm-hmm. on, you know, this stream, for instance, was kind of like my big event that I had to like, like, like everything was based around like my 12 o'clock start time for this. And I don't even know what I have after this because it just doesn't exist. <laughs> everything before it and everything <laughs> after it didn't exist. Yeah. So once I kind of understand that about myself, I'm able to come up with a plan around it. I can write down things and have a list and like sit myself to like, it's, it's so, so powerful just to, to, to add that ADHD search term or, or to, mm-hmm. to, to watch the content that's geared toward that. I, I haven't used it as an excuse or other things that I was kind of concerned that I would right? like, cause I already had this impression mm-hmm. of myself as a lazy person because of the yeah. ADHD or, 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 or because of the symptoms of the ADHD, right? Like I get off track, I don't yeah. hit deadlines or whatever. And so I'm just, I'm just lazy. Great. Now I have a diagnosis and I'm going to be even lazier. I'm going to use it as an excuse and just <laughs> lay around my house and say, Oh, I'm being so ADHD right now or whatever. Right. Like it's like, I'm, I'm just saying that about myself, like just for, for, right. for, for, for Claudia, I'm, I'm, I was concerned that I would live up to the diagnosis and, mm-hmm. and with like, yeah. So it, it, it hasn't been like that at all. It's been empowering for me. Um, just because, yeah, like you, you start to realize you're not just a piece of crap. You're not just lazy. You're not weak. You're not. You're also you're a piece of crap. And yeah, exactly. I'm not a piece of you crap have because ADHD. of this. It's because of the opinions <laughs> yeah. that I have and the things I say to people. <laughs> there you I, go. It's because of how I treat yeah. my fellow humans. Now, um, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> though. Uh, oh, good times. <laughs> yeah, so I just I, I I realized I just kind of went like in and like rambled for a little bit. See, you you unlocked that, and I uh, <laughs> I, I like I, that I, though. No, that was that was good. And you know, one of the things you kind of you mentioned though, we talked about superpowers earlier, but like, um, you were talking about how nothing really exists before or after the stream because that's the thing you know that you were focused yeah. on, um there's a bit of a gift to being able to just kind of be in the moment around something. So like I, um, I sometimes find that I'm, if I'm stressed about something, I'm completely falling apart. But I also find that things don't always bother me as much as they do other people. Or like if I get, I, I will get like, really like sad or angry about something, but then I move on from that emotion really quickly too, because my, my short term memory, um, uh, the, the kind of that, that, that weird working memory where like, I can only hold one or two things in my head means that those old emotions fall away really quickly when new things come in to replace them. And so the superpower there is like, I can be a lot more in the moment than, other people can. I don't always have kind of other things, kind of um, uh, you know, responsibilities bothering me. I guess I should Got say, it. if there's something else like I'm uh, I'm obsessed with, like say camper vans, um, then that will be the only thing that I can focus on. To the point that, like, I mean, dude, you you made you made that joke. Like, I was literally putting together a spreadsheet on what all these different camper van components would cost just before we jumped on the stream. And then anytime I get together with my family now, oh, what have you been up to, Chris? Well, you know, I was researching. I think the latest with the camper van, like the F five fifty versus the F three fifty with the payload limits. I'm not sure which one will be the right one for my build. And like, just <laughs> like, have all you seen I the transmission prices on eBay? No, Chris, R- <laughs> right? It's just yeah. So. Um, you know, it's again, blessing and a curse, but I have the capacity to be a lot more in the moment, um, sometimes than, uh, or at least to ignore some other things that might kind of pull people out of a, out of a thing. Um, pressing applications so, yeah. or something that, yeah. 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 I think I had a point somewhere in there. I forget what it was, but no, I, hopefully I, it landed. I, so the point I took from it is that like, uh, not having, a you know like, like i don't have all of my tasks in my head right now and because of that i can kind of like focus on this sort of thing where I, i'm not like planning five steps ahead or whatever. yeah I it just, would, it's I you just, know yeah blessing and a curse obviously there's a, a negative side to that too but um you know it can it, it can be burning? a nice thing sometimes <laughs> you know? oh, crap. yeah 
Yeah, um, that's where, I mean, again, Apple Watch. I set timers for absolutely everything. Like I, have, I put... Yeah, no, sorry. I, I put toast in the toaster. I'm going to set a timer or it's going to burn. Yeah, I have the G-O-O-G-L-E home. I don't want to say it because it'll start setting timers and everything. Boop, boop. Um, but yeah, I, I've got those yeah. and those are really helpful just to like reduce any kind of friction between timers and myself. This is great so I can put my phone away and not go down like a dopamine rabbit hole, but still have <clears throat> my calendar, right? So like I know what's next. Go, okay, cool. Yep. Now, now I know. Um, weather, time, <laughs> those sorts of things. Like, like I'm still connected in the ways that I need to be, but it's not like, like this isn't a dopamine hit. This isn't in, in, engaging. And I'll, I'll, I'll put it down because you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> this, yeah. this, yeah. But like, no, but I used to be really annoyed at how little it did. And I've come to realize that that's, that's the, part. the trick of it yeah, is I've got, like you part. said, my next calendar appointment. If I got an urgent text message, I can see it right here, but I don't like, Oh, you know what? I've got my phone open. Let me just check Twitter. And like, Oh my God. What yeah. did he do now? You know, and it just becomes this whole like, you know who I'm talking about, Bruce Willis. And it becomes yeah, whole... he's in another movie. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Um, um, <laughs> oh man. Yeah, but yeah, you, just, you you go down the rabbit hole, and then before you know it, an hour's gone. And you're like, oh, I meant to work during that hour. Um, but no, but this this is <laughs> this the Apple Watch is absolutely worth it to me because of how how little it does. Or, or, or rather, like, it's such a how, weird selling point. It, it does so little. Go right, buy one now. Right. It, it does. It does just enough. Like, and I, I don't have my email ding on it or anything. I, I've like, I've paired it back. Uh, I have my meditation app on it. Um, I have a couple other things on it where, like, yeah, it's just I, I, I can go to a part of my house that doesn't have a computer or anything like that, and do those sorts of like self care things with the. I'm sorry. What? You have a part of your house that doesn't have a computer in it. It's it's a it's, you call it's yourself the corner a developer. There. It's it's just it's just <laughs> the corner right here. Yeah, it's it's a few feet from a computer. Um, yeah, so that's that's been helpful. Another app that I've really really liked, and um, it kind of ties in one feature that uh, my therapist recommended for for ADHD is uh, setting timers, like kind of like five minute, ten minute timers, just to check. Hey. Are you doing the thing you want to do? And that has been so useful. Um, so the app is Llama Life, and it's not that complicated of an app or anything. Um, it's pretty simple, and that's the, uh, once again, simplicity is kind mm -hmm. of like the, the benefit here. <clears throat> All you do is like add in a couple tasks, and for some reason, I've always gravitated towards these kind of timer based things where I say, I think this is going to take about 10 minutes or, or I, I guess, I guess it's the opposite of, um, I only want to spend 10 minutes on this, right? Like that is so key where, where I'll, I'll have a full plan for my day. And the first task, it's like, read a book or, uh, work on my website. And then three hours later I go, Oh, I've been working on my website the whole time. And I wasn't supposed to do that. I was supposed to get so many more things done. Okay. You answered my question about, I was, I was going to ask how you prevent this. So my fear with a timer like that would be, okay, I'm like, I'm deep in focus on this thing. And now you've interrupted me, but you're specifically saying, I don't want to work on it for more than X. Or, Sometimes. Um, you know, that makes more sense to me. Um, or, you know, I, I'd like to, um, yeah. Yeah. It helps you avoid that thing where you open up your computer to do a task and then you end up doing a different unrelated thing because yeah. Reasons. Or, yeah. Or, <laughs> or like, um, I, I will also, you know, it, it might not even be that that same task, but I might like, I don't know, start to go and meditate. And so I open my app, but there's something about this app. Maybe there's a better meditation app out there. I should Google. I should search through Be best meditation apps. Oh, there's five. I should research these apps now. Let's see. The first one seems pretty cool. I like it. It's not bad. Uh, second one. Oh, this is neat. Huh. It talks about um, a certain kind of meditation. I need to search and see if this kind of meditation is actually valid. Is there any scientific studies about this kind of meditation? Oh, that's interesting. I haven't found this scientific uh 
di- or, uh, documentation site before. Is this a good site? This is cool. They have something about uh, chiropractic doctors. Oh, chiropractor. I, I don't like them. Let's dig into... Now I'm, I'm off onto Wikipedia looking to see chiropractors and the history of that. I can easily go pinging down there. This... Uh, I can set to have it so that it it mm-hmm. does just a friendly chime every five minutes. And just a ding ding ding. And I and it just it's it's wonderful because I get to kind of answer the question that that, that chime asks in my head of hey, are you on task? And I, and, mm-hmm. I, and and it's it's re it's either empowering when I get to go, all right, I'm on task. Awesome. And I get to like continue and build some momentum there or it helps me kind of come back like if 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 you meditate or if anyone in chat uh does any meditation you know like part of it is just coming back to now like your brain will think your brain will run off in all kinds of directions and the entire practice is just all right let's come back and that's what like the 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 bell helps me to do so like it's it's not even about like the getting the time right or anything else like that. It's like making sure that I'm, I'm focused and can kind of keep coming back t- to the current task if I'm off uh, mm-hmm. or that I can make sure that certain tasks aren't ballooning and I spend an entire hour journaling when I meant to for 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, along these lines, I think one thing that's been really important for me is to... Um, just be mindful of the fact for me anyways that no no one um it's really easy to fall down like the productivity rabbit hole of like um trying these really complex systems and things like that and i've just i've personally found that just simple little things like hey a timer that just checks to see that you're on task um or just a list of stuff you need to get done um uh have always worked the best for me Mm -hmm. over like i've tried to do things like gtd or getting things done um and uh it just it never it's like it works great and then it gets boring and it doesn't work anymore Um, yeah same same thing with workouts like you know the more complicated my like workout routines are they'll be really exciting for like a week or two um and then then they get boring and then the ones that are like just you go in you do the work you get on with your life um tend to be the, the easiest ones to build into habits absolutely absolutely that that has absolutely been my experience um so uh, i'm 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 curious what's your level of like stimulation for working well so so i i should probably preface this with like what what i mean by that so apparently when they do studies around um kids with ADHD they find that if you put um they they did a study where they they put kids in just a plain beige room nothing to look at nothing on the wall it's just plain and their behavior or whatever metric that they were checking was worse than a room with like some stuff in it like some things on the walls just like some kind of like stimulation maybe a little bit of noise or 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 whatever uh, um, you got like a, c- kind of a beige backdrop at least. It, yeah, that's why I'm... Uh, and, 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 and then like sounds and everything. So like some people will need to find, <laughs> there you go. My one piece of decor. What is that? <laughs> that is, um, so this is from WordCamp Boston, like okay. a decade and a half ago. Nice. Um, uh, it's just, it's a poster of some monster over the, the like, the, uh, the Sitco gas sign that I don't even remember if that's still in Boston anymore, but it was at the time. Got it. (laughs) Um, What about like sound or music or anything? Like, do you have to have some music going when you're writing, when you're coding, when you're. Okay. So I, um, uh, I prefer like, I'm someone who really enjoys like a Zen like environment. So I don't really want much on my desk. Okay. Um, the walls, I guess, just kind of become like background distraction for me. Um, I have a pirate flag that I've been meaning to hang up for like two years, but again, ADHD, <laughs> so I haven't. Um, it was from a pirate themed birthday because I still have those as an adult because I'm awesome. Um, but um, I'd love to go to that. Uh, That's great. I um, 
Uh, yeah, I also really enjoy working outside. Um, and I don't mind that because most of the noise is just kind of like background white noise. Um, and I live in like very rural suburbs and every now and then like a, a butterfly will come land on my shoulder. Like I'm a princess in a Disney movie and it's amazing. <laughs> but, um, yeah, my personal, like I hate music. Um, playing okay. while I'm working. Ironically, if I'm in a cafe and there's music on in the background, that doesn't bother me. But if there's no other noise, yeah, the music gets distracting. Even if it's just like audio only with no lyrics, um, I will break into random karaoke or do an awkward, like really poorly done freestyle over whatever. I bet it's um, super. Make dope. up my own, make up my own lyrics. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. I could have been a jingler in another life. Like I feel like it was a really like a missed calling, you know. <laughs> Um, I'm so sad that your courses don't have jingles now. That's that's a real oversight. I feel like it really is. Yeah, you, know? you have the microphone. Um, you have no excuse. I need to. Damn it! Let me open up my to do app. <laughs> Got a new thing to add to it. So, so thanks, Alex. So for me, like I I find that I'm a lot more focused when I have at least some background music without lyrics. It's just like I use this app mm -hmm. called Brain.fm. Um, I'll kind of pull it up real quick uh this is just like the actual app so i guess there's like an actual like uh oh shoot what am i doing brain dot fm dot and this has just been helpful like it's it's i mean like the same thing with like the rainy noise like all all that kind of stuff just something in the background that doesn't have lyrics on it doesn't have anything um just kind of keeps me engaged. I, I need some stimulation where like, apparently with ADHD, there's like a certain level mm, for, mm. for uh, at least for some people where like you can't have too little or too much. You kind of need like just a right amount and finding your like stimulation level is really important and just helpful. I am. Um, I'm really hung up on the clearly marketing nonsense of brain FM where they say they use patented neuromodulation. Oh. Absolutely like, really... nonsense. It's just like we 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 have sound waves that go up and down. I don't even care. It's just like, yeah, this is <laughs> this is random enough and like it, it hits right. well enough. I like I said, I, I do take uh like I, I look for a lot of scientific backing yeah. to things when people say like neurologically proven or whatever. I'm like, yeah, pr probably not though. They're probably just like there's like one study that showed a little bit of like oh yeah, people kind of showed a little bit of you know like uh, well white white noise and brown noise like there is some some research to show that that actually mm. does help with with ADHD. I was kind of surprised. Is like, brown noise like people farting or what's? <laughs> All right, that's our uh, thanks everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it helps though. Um, All right, don't knock it until you've tried it. No, it's 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 just um, like a warmer kind of noise, but yeah. Oh, cool! I did not realize that was a thing. I Chat loved remember. that. Chat loved bad, that. Bad joke. I'm sorry. It's um, wonderful. No, it's wonderful. I um, man, here's the thing. I was so focused on making that joke that I had a thought and I lost. Wasn't as important. Wasn't it was like a good, solid point, and. Uh, oh no! You know what? It was another joke. It probably wasn't as funny. <laughs> <It's> my... <laughs> I thought it was so important, and then it your came one back to joke me. elbowed another... your other joke out of the way <laughs> and ran out your brain. Sense. That's amazing. That is amazing. Yeah. So like the lo-fi music oh. and classical, I can't do lyrics. Yeah. Oh, well, well, I can do lyrics mm -hmm. if it's a creative thing. Like if I'm designing, yeah. I can. I can. Like yeah, yeah I can. But I will also. Listen to one song to death, like a thousand. Tub thumping times. by Chumbawamba. Yeah, I mean, how, there's nothing better. Was that the Was that the yeah. previous show? That you no, it was not. <laughs> just, uh, I don't know um, why. When you said there's one song, that's just, just one into song. Head. Chat it's knows the ultimate it. song. No, just like yeah, I, I I can loop one song forever, um, but I do want to get to questions. Um, be, be, before we are out of time look at me look at me managing time and schedules and stuff um well done let me see wonder there we go so <clears throat> let me just pull this up give me one sec two people all right studio mode off i wonder there we go interact well it takes me a second to get here there we go now we can do the little hover all right cool Ooh, so fancy. um chat just uh in case you have another question uh you can toss it in here with 
that little exclamation mark wonder. And uh, yeah, we, we, so once again, Chris and I, just two people who have ADHD, neither of us are doctors, neither of us are even all that smart, really. We're just <laughs> Speak for yourself. Chris I'm a licensed smart. expert yeah. <laughs> and known genius. I just, I just figured out how to do OBS. So now I have a stream and that's why I'm here. That's pretty much it. Um, so are there specific things? Sorry, I, I, I got distracted by Misto Jen. Not your fault, Mr. Jen, but I, and, and actually you can't see the, the, the chat, but Mr. Jen says, I tend to do video game soundtracks. That's exactly what I do. Video game soundtracks are fantastic because like they're designed to keep you engaged in a thing, but not distract from the thing itself. So they're typically like just no lyrics and kind of like just the right amount of intensity for me. So yeah, I, I do the same exact I thing. I wonder if anyone's ever made like a white noise thing from DMX growling like a dog. Just, <laughs> just is the whole, almost that's, sounds like throat chanting. That's how you know? I fall asleep like... actually. Yeah. It's, it's wonderful. <laughs> um, sorry, but All right, Evan, our, our, our friend Evan here, uh, wrote uh are there specific things those of us without adhd can do to help those people in our lives that have adhd that's a great question and a really empathetic question evan i i, I appreciate you for that what do you think chris no i'm just kidding um we're, yeah we're, we're, uh, we're, we're, yeah we're lost causes evan <laughs> just cut and run buddy uh, <laughs> right yeah find another partner um we um no um yeah so i again just just speaking for myself yeah. um uh I, I think one of the things I always personally struggle with is like not making my ADHD like a burden on someone else. Cause like my natural inclination would be to be like, yeah, this is fine. It doesn't bother me. You need to just learn to live with it. Um, uh, I, I think probably the biggest thing is it's really tough. I can imagine. Um, but you know, being understanding of the fact that you will probably have to repeat yourself a bunch of times on things that there will be times where I am looking you dead in the eye and not hearing a single word that's coming out of your mouth, like that kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, like, I'm just thinking about how frustrating that must be to be on the other side of things. And so um, the fact that I think, Evan, you're even asking this question tells me that um, you're probably doing a good job at it, whatever it is. I don't think there's any like specific things other than just, you know, being, um, well, no, that's not true. I was gonna say the big one is just kind of being like empathetic and understanding, but um, you know, some of the stuff we've talked about in terms of like, how you break up or assign tasks. Like if you throw eight things at me, I'm going to forget six of them and probably only remember the first two or the last two, um, yeah. you know, things, things like that. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't, I'm, I'm having at this particular moment, I'm having a tough time coming up with specifics. No, I don't think what, what you just said is great. Like writing things down and not expecting me to keep those all juggled in my head. Like if, if, if you were to mm -hmm. write that list down for me, that really helps. And then I can go through them one at a time. But if you just said like, "Hey, I, I need you to pick up from 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 the store like grapes and olives and tomatoes and cereal mm -hmm. and but I'm I'm remembering the one that sounds most delicious or whatever, right? Like I'm and and to be yeah. fair, like that's that's a, a lot of folks like the 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 thing that I, I always struggle with is like, is it ADHD or is it just people, right? Like, like just does everyone just struggle to keep like twelve things in their head? Yeah, everyone does, but. Um, I, I think there are strategies that you can use to help work with or live with people with ADHD that yeah. <clears throat> that helps kind of across the board too. Like mm -hmm. like sending that as as a list to someone or um, or just asking questions to find out the you know maybe the reason to why there's a, a mm -hmm. mess or yeah I I I think a lot of it comes back to communication and kind of just like understanding one another um maybe i don't have a good answer here <laughs> i think yeah. i'm starting to put fluff in here um but one one thing that's helped my wife i feel like and I'm, I, mean, I don't mean to speak for her but uh me showing her these these videos or like telling her what i'm learning about myself has has helped her like live with me and so <laughs> uh maybe nice. yeah just watching some videos or just kind of like getting the basics where like she has depression and I've learned a lot about depression since being with her and like, you know, understanding it more deeply. And so 
same 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 sort of thing back <clears throat> where like yeah i mm -hmm. i uh it, it's it's about getting that education and about learning what it what it really is and what it isn't and how it can manifest in different ways so all right was there anything else that you wanted to add there nothing on my end no that was a good that was a cool. good summary alex nice and evan says uh or anything to stop for people such a good suggestion but no all, all good and uh always good to have you here uh oh quick yeah. quick yeah. just quick thing this just yeah. occurred to me my wife now has um she started uh if there's something she wants me to remember to do but i'm in the middle of something she texts it to me or sent it in an email that way i have it written i can reference it i can throw it into my like to do app as part of my processing when i get to it but it's not breaking me out of that moment like can i just remind you of something for a second you know like yeah the 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 interruptions are really painful um and so she does it in a way that's non-interruptive and i really i appreciate that just a little thing that yeah i just realized she started doing in the last like month or two that's actually made a huge difference so uh, my wife's done the same there. thing in like the last month or two yeah she, we, we became friends on discord and she now will like message me things there and i'm able to like <laughs> get to them when i get to them uh that's, that's amazing point. yeah Love so it. like I, I i think just just you saying that makes me realize I don't know all the things that she does to deal with me and, and my ADHD. And she probably doesn't even know all the things that she does to deal with it because she just knows that it's like who I am. Right. And, and she's part like, two, get the wives on the stream. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We're just in the background going, what, what, what do you mean? I clean. I'm not, no, it's not that messy. Just like, the whole time. <laughs> Oh my god! No, I know myself. I'm a slob. I... Yeah, <laughs> I'm, yeah I, I'm just messy. A anyway, yeah. an anyway, I, I do want to get past the first question. Cotron <laughs> yes. uh, says, "Do you ever feel embarrassed or nervous talking about your ADHD at work? And if so, how did you get over that hump?" So no. we did talk about. This so this is bit. um this one's a tough one for me because I have that unearned white man confidence. Um, yeah. and I was also raised um uh. Uh, I was raised so my dad is very much of the like ask for forgiveness, not permission kind mm. of mindset. Um, and uh, I, I've grown up oh. in New England where we tend to be a little bit more like blunt about uh, things. I was gonna pause you super quick. Sorry. Um, yeah, Jason just rated us. Hey, everybody, thank you for coming through. Uh, Jason, thanks, <clears throat> thanks for the raid. Um, we are chatting ADHD. We t we, we typically do front end development. <laughs> creative coding stuff here uh my guest chris and i both have adhd and so we're, we're getting to, a little bit towards the end of the stream where we are answering your questions and if you have a question uh about adhd might be tough to come up with a question just at the end because you have no idea what, what what we covered but hey i want to enable you to do so um but yeah, so we, we're just kind of answering some awesome questions from the chat that, that we've had. But thank you so much, Jason, for the raid. I, I appreciate it. Sorry to cut you off, Chris. Just wanted to, to kind of Oh, explain no, it's totally fine. Yeah, so for, for me, it's just, um, uh, you know, I was just, I, my personality is such that I, I have always been very kind of um, like blunt and direct and honest. So I had less of the, and I am, um, I, I don't. I'm so used to being the outcast that I don't, um, which I've also learned is a, a, a side effect of all of like my really more annoying ADHD quirks yeah. um, that are, I'm are at a point in my Andre life where I don't. Are you more of an Andre or a big boy? What's that? Are you more of an Andre oh, 3000 Andre or, or a big boy? boy? Uh, Andre. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, I'm more of a big boy, but anyway. I'm a little, I'm, a, I'm eccentric, but um, uh but people like Andre, you know, is the, is the big difference here. Whereas I'm just like, I'm that annoying, like puppy that ran in and peed all over the carpet, barked at a bunch of people and then ran out of the room. Um, but, um, yeah, I, am. Um, I, I, I tend to just not care as much. I imagine there was a point in my career, like earlier on where I would have been uncomfortable, not embarrassed, but maybe uncomfortable about like career implications of talking about it. But by the time I started connecting the dots on, oh, I am this way because of my ADHD, I had like literally forgotten I had it for like a decade because Got I was it. never medicated or treated for it. And right. so it just kind of like fell out of my my brain for a little bit. Um, uh, but, you know, at that point in my career, I probably would have felt uncomfortable talking about it just because 
I felt like I was failing at work and didn't want to draw more attention to myself. Um, uh, but um, yeah, now it, yeah, now, now not. And um, in terms of how I would get over that or how I got over that hump, it was not it just because of timing, not an issue for me. Um, uh, I don't know how I would get, well, I guess the one thing I would say is more people have ADHD than you probably realize. And one of the most interesting things I've found about talking about my ADHD is how many people have been like, I think I have ADHD. That sounds a lot like me, at which point I can then send them, you know, to like a self-diagnostic quiz where they can kind of figure out if they might actually have it or not. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, so just for, for me, um, I, I don't have much to add to, to, to what you said, but for me, I, I think <clears throat> it's the same thing of unearned white man confidence there um, where, I, yeah, I, I'm not going to face many repercussions for a, a, a lot of things. I also work for a French company and uh, just labor laws. And I think a lot of judgment and stuff yeah. there is, is just a bit, a bit better than in the States. Um, but also I've always been, uh, I mean, like I, I was an elementary school teacher for five years, which at least here in the States mm -hmm. as a man is very unusual. I was always the only, uh, man at the school except for the gym teacher the gym yeah. teacher was always a guy uh <laughs> i was the only like teacher i so i i i uh i i i, I guess i'm trying to say like I, i've always been like in uh okay with like those sorts of conversations just like more in touch with my emotions or i'm i'm not sure what i'm trying to say there but like i, f I feel like they're a little bit connected do you do you get what i mean chris no. Yes. Um, no, no, no. I, I do. Um, and I'm trying to think of a way to say this that doesn't come across as like sexist gendered nonsense because right. I, 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 um, <clears throat> yeah, I male dominated spaces tend to be a lot more hyper competitive, um, just because of stupid cultural, social constructs and things like that. Um, and, uh, when I have been in more uh, female-dominated spaces, I've I've definitely felt more comfortable talking about my emotional, emotions and my needs and like that kind of thing. I totally get where that's coming from. There's just some weird American culture thing among guys about talking about. Yeah, and and stuff that yeah yeah. There's there's a a lot of emotional intelligence difference in like macho male culture and just standard yeah. culture right like like yeah, yeah. to be to be clear i don't think this is a biological thing i think this is just it's american culture and weird toxic masculinity nonsense yeah and, it's a gender thing yeah. not a sex thing it's uh it's a yeah. boys wear blue kind of garbage yeah <laughs> um and we, do, we don't show our emotions we just get <laughs> mad we don't cry we get mad and so yeah anyway um mm -hmm. so yeah I've, I've just always been comfortable with uh emotional yeah. intelligence and <clears throat> um yeah my stutter and just other things so to, so that like when i started going to therapy i was vocal about it um and also i've surrounded myself with really positive people like the uh mm -hmm. the, the discord if you're not in the discord and you are a positive nice person hop on in um the discord's always been super supportive when i talk about this kind of stuff like i've i've uh i've always had a great community around me but also like you said like i i uh I have a lot of privilege, so I, I, mm -hmm. it's, it's easier to, to, to open up in those kinds of ways. Um, so yeah, like my, my experience is not going to be everyone's for sure, but, um, but yeah, I, I, th I think just building trust with, with my coworkers and everything like, like I, I love the people mm -hmm. I'm on my team with and everything. So, um, yeah. there wasn't a big issue there for me. Um, I, I do want to kick us to the next one. I, I feel like <laughs> all, all of these I could chat for like 10 minutes about. Um, yeah. Do you ever find it difficult to find a job that accommodates your unique ADHD way of working? Yes. Um, so you're self-employed. I, I do just want to put I am, but I, I, this is new. I, right. the, I've only become fully self-employed in the last six months. Congrats, maybe. by the um, way. That's so cool. You are a full-time creator now right and and yeah which is um 
What's in, your site again? In a country that does not provide health care as its own form of nerve wracking. Um, <laughs> but, um, uh, but yeah, um, so before that, yes, definitely. Um, so for example, one of the things I always knew was really important to me was um, remote work because I had experience with it before it. I was a developer, when I was in HR. Um, and uh, not the last job I had, but the one before that, um, I specifically talked about that as part of my interview process everywhere. And the place that ultimately hired me, um, they were like, well, you know, we, we can talk about that once you get settled. Um, and then I got settled and they're like, no, not yet. Uh, okay. You know, a month later, no, 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 not yet. And then finally I was like, all right. So, you know, like I feel settled. I've been doing work. Like when's yet. And they were like, well, you know, remote work's just not really a thing we do here. And I go, oh, okay, cool. Never. And then I quit a week later. Um, so I really? just have, um, I think one of the, again, super privileged here talking, but I have, um, I have a very low threshold for nonsense or, uh, to quote the great Joe Biden malarkey. So, um, <laughs> I, um, uh, I don't, um, uh, it can be difficult. I think, um, uh, Again, I'm not saying remote work is for everyone, but I think the last two years have really shaken up the employer-employee kind of power dynamic. And if ever there was a time for workers to have more kind of power and control over how they work, um, it, it's it's now. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, I to be honest, I, I I was in my last job for like eight years and or seven years, something like that, and then um, I. Uh, I left to go work on my own. So I don't know what the job hunt experience is like right now. But from what I read online, um, I'm a very, very on the internet kind of person. Um, I suspect uh, um, things might be a little bit easier now than they maybe were a decade ago. Yeah. Uh, at least in, <clears throat> in tech and working remote. Well, see, like, I, I feel like remote's a double-edged sword. Like, sometimes I, I wish that there was someone watching me and just making sure I'm on tech. Like because it, it, it requires a lot of self-discipline, a lot of self-regulation, a lot of self-scheduling, right? Like, and I, I yeah. sometimes sh struggle with that. So true. Fair. It's, yep. It's tricky. Yeah. Like I, I would love to be like part-time remote or, or, or something, but that's just, that's just me. Um, yeah. but yeah, Greg, I'm, I'm kind of brand new to knowing that I have ADHD in the first place. <clears throat> so, um, I've, I've had the same job since then. So unfortunately I don't have a whole lot of like experience interviewing and asking about this sort of thing but it's an interesting question if anyone has any um additional insights on this i would love to hear them because i'm not sure yeah the other thing just worth mentioning is um how to adhd has a great cool. video on um workplace um accommodations and how to ask for them and what work is required to to give you and that sort of thing um i will um actually i have a um a whole kind of web page set up for this particular discussion. Uh, so perfect. Go make things.com slash horses with ADHD. Uh, um, you are I will make sure that gets linked to there. Um, uh, you know, just if you're kind of curious about what that process looks like and um, uh, having an official diagnosis is not. Uh, so technically legally it's required, but um, I've never had an employer actually like ask for it. Um, uh, sometimes just saying I have ADHD, even if you're self-diagnosed. Oh, um, oh, sorry. Is, is you enough, have ADHD? You know? Name five things around the room. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, just if that's useful for anyone, I'll make sure that gets, that gets linked to. <clears throat> All right. Sounds good. And, uh, awesome. I, I dropped the, uh, the link in the chat. Thanks for putting that together. You, you are always fantastic with these, uh, with these no pages. Worries. That's, that's a really clever thing to do. Um, cool. So. Greg also asks, do you ever get accused of being selfish, especially by your wife, because you are so focused on trying to deal with your own stuff or chasing dopamine? <laughs> so where do you keep the cameras, Greg? Yes. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> no. Is this my wife? I'm just no. kidding. <laughs> like, um, our our, right? our Greg, wives just Greg create some burner wife. accounts. <laughs> yeah. No, I will say the one, the one thing I have actually been kind of accused of is... Um, the thing you were, I think, a little bit more sensitive about, Alex, which is not wanting to use ADHD as an excuse. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's it's uh, it's tough. Um, where um, I I actually think I do sometimes use ADHD as an excuse. Where like, 
that's boring and I don't want to do it does not necessarily mean um, I can't or don't have to. Um, and so I, one of my big areas for improvement is being more mindful of that. Got it. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. I want to be really clear and not like, you know, painting my wife as someone who's like mean about my ADHD because it's not that she's incredibly accommodating, uh, like way more so than I think is probably reasonable. Um, yeah, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's, I've been accused of that because I have been being selfish and that's that's on me Got it. you know yeah no so i i haven't been accused of being selfish but maybe i should have been maybe that's something that sh should have happened but yeah i can get like sucked yeah. into projects and spend a lot of time there and uh neglect just the rest of my life to be honest and so yeah yeah like uh anyone who who's familiar with me and front end horse and everything like, like i work a full-time job with prismic and then i run a whole bunch of other things that give me dopamine hits and make me feel mm -hmm. um, good about myself uh, with with fr front end horse, um, and you know maybe that's that's m me chasing dopamine a lot and uh, getting hyper focused. Maybe I'm I'm it's mm -hmm. once again it's tough to say of like is is that the ADHD or is that just like my personality and you know other parts yeah. of my brain? But um, yeah, it's. Uh, so, 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 so far so good. And I, I do have a very supportive wife. So that's been, uh, that's been good. Yeah. I, I will say actually the bigger problem for me is, is, is these f phones are just so addictive. Yes. I, um, yeah, I, yes. I get sucked into that Twitter rabbit hole, um, at times where I should be doing other things. Um, well, it's, uh, it's that's, hard that's been to, really tough to want to put things out on Twitter and to be, uh, a content creator who like, like I'm trying to do TikToks now and then I'll like go to like respond to comments there and then I get sucked into TikTok. Like it's it's hard to to just drop things off into that realm and not mm -hmm. stay for the whole day. That sure. I, I, I find difficult. So like that's yeah, the the phones <clears throat> are rough for sure. Yeah. Um what was your process slash how difficult was it? for you to find the right therapist. I've been through three so far with little success. Oof. Um, for me, it was the first one, but I've been through a few different marriage counselors and my wife's been through a few therapists. So like it's, it's, um, it's not the, uh, it's not uncommon to to not get it right the first time and it's like a relationship it's almost like a dating kind of thing where you need to like check out what's right because like right now like my therapist and i are just a really good fit it feels like like i i've only had the one but it's been great so far um so yeah it's it's just kind of like a personality thing it's like do you do you click do they understand you I don't know. It, it's it's not even like a generational thing sometimes because like my 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 wife's therapist is is much older than she is, and this has been like her best one yet. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. It's <clears throat> it's tough to say. It's just kind of like a do you do you work? Um, and Chris, you said that you don't have a therapist, right? No, I don't. Um, so I can't I can't yeah. speak to this question. Yeah. So, sorry. Catrones, I I know my thing of like yeah, just the first one I I tried isn't very helpful, but um, but going through three like yeah, I've I know lots. This of experience is why much. I've been so hesitant to find one. Like I really want a therapist who like gets ADHD and understands me, and that's I, so you know my yeah. my my whole but process. You're never is, gonna know until you just try one. That's right. I know. I gotta rip that <laughs> bandaid off. I get it. <clears throat> I know you get it. Um, how do you deal with bad ADHD days? Do you still have them even when on meds? Yeah, so neither of us are on meds now, right? It's right. Correct. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I have family members who are. Right, um, they do sometimes still have bad days. Um, and um, it, uh, yeah, uh, I'm just trying to think about how do I, well, so I already talked a little bit about how I deal with my bad ADHD days. I, um, uh, yeah, I just, sometimes I just, <laughs> just don't Take bother. I just kind of yeah. go off and do, 
do other things. Um, yeah, I don't have a good answer for this. All like good. you said, I'm self-employed now, so I can... All oh, good. sorry, my dog's barking. I'm going to go good. deal with that while you answer, Alex. Sounds good. Sounds good, yeah. And we, we, we are a little bit over time, so I'm going to try to go through these a little bit faster. Um, but for me, it's like I, I will have bad ADHD days. Walks really help. Um, apparently, there's a thing called like green time where you just go outside spend some time around nature that can really help um kind of resetting for me journaling is really helpful because i like stay in my brain a lot and if i just start talking to myself on paper or like in in my uh notes app it's really helpful to be like all right dude what's going on why can't i focus what's or or or, or like i'm just having an off day and how can i kind of at least get something done today what's one step like just talking to myself as if i'm like a friend uh, is really helpful for me to kind of just like, like, yeah, every, every journal thing for, for me starts out with, Hey buddy, good job getting up and doing this thing. What are we working on today? Like, that's just how I, I journal. So like <laughs> being able to talk to myself that way, uh, and do some positive self-talk can at least get me to have like a non-zero day. Also lately I've been doing a lot of, um, like a win list is kind of what I'm calling it, but I think there's like a better name for it. Where just like anything that I'm like getting done throughout the day or like a, 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 a meeting that I did, I'm adding it to the list where usually by the end of the day, I feel like I've done nothing. And it's just like, ah, I didn't get that, that big thing done. And so today was just a wash. But then I look at this list and it's like, oh no, I, I, I exercised, I showered, I took the dog for a walk. I, you know, I, I did my hair. I uh, went to that meeting. I, Right, like I, I responded to that email. Responding to emails can be tough for me. So like even that's kind of a win. Um, and I look at that and I go, all right. Like and it just kind of like helps to motivate and helps to not beat myself up. So that, that, that's been effective for me. All right, going to start speed running it because we are way over time. Sorry, uh, do, you, do, you, do, you, do you have to go or can you hang on for another five? Or, no, I'm, right, I'm, cool. I'm good. I, cool. I'm self-employed um, now, Alex. I'm here all day. <laughs> so this one's quick. Yes, this one will be available after the stream. Uh, it's Chris says, is it necessary to experience hyperfocus to be diagnosed with ADHD? I don't think it is. I, I don't think, that, I, don't, I don't think there's one requirement to ADHD. No, I, I have at least one friend who, um, she says she never experiences hyperfocus, just the negative bits. So Got her it. ADHD is really fun for her. God, oh man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm dropping the ADHD <clears throat> test in chat once again, just to putting it there and I'll uh, show us here just so that uh, folks who are watching it after the fact can see it's ADD, ADD.org slash ADHD test. This is just the one that my therapist recommended, but she did say that like a diagnosis is not, uh, you know, like if, if you get a result on this test, it's not like, aha, I definitely have it or no, it's just a good way to like aim you towards a doctor or, or something, right? So... Yeah, just just a heads up there. Um, Catrones, oh, it reset. Hold on. Okay, Catrones asks, uh, how do you get yourself back to focusing on the right thing when you finally realize you've been sidetracked on the wrong thing? Yeah, Chris, do you want to take a stab at that, or or does that kind of shrug tie emoji? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I I will say one thing is um, sometimes. I'm, I have some days where I'm better at this than others, but like sometimes one thing that actually does work is you just, you pick the one thing of the task you're supposed to be working on that you can do. It doesn't necessarily have to be the right place to start or the most important part of it. Yeah. You just, whatever the thing is that will actually get you to start working on it. And once you get into it a little bit, sometimes you can kind of get sucked in and kick into that like focus mode. Um, uh, that's not always the case though. Um, but that's, that's the closest thing to it that I've got. Um, I mean, I also, as I mentioned, I blew two weeks on camper van research, so I'm maybe not the yeah. best person to answer this question. No, if um, I knew damn well in the middle of it that I was wasting my time and I just couldn't, couldn't stop myself. So. Or it's a strategy. Yeah. If, if, if you're not working on your stuff, check out camper vans because, um, they will have, <laughs> That's just Chris's. <laughs> just look into it. It's pretty cool. What have and I done? You, oh man! If you find a good deal, let me know because I'm looking for a certain transmission on a uh, <laughs> 2012 Ford. Uh, whatever. Um, yeah. So I, I I talked a little bit about it. Like I, I think part of it is um, setting up systems that help 
catch myself, right? Like just like timers that check in every like half hour or what, what whatever it is, just something to kind of ask the question and snap you out of your like focus on on other things. Because once again, ADHD is not like a, a lack of attention. It's there's the attention on the wrong thing or, or, or not able to regulate where that attention is going, right? So I can pay attention to Wikipedia for two hours and just if nothing's kind of saying, hey, come come back, I can just kind of be gone for a while. Um, so setting up systems <clears throat> that I can set and forget and I don't have to like constantly, you know, come back to and do every single day. If it's just like on, on my watch or on my phone or like Llama Life or something like that where I can just have those reminders, it's so much easier uh, to kind of come back to things. And I think someone might have been Claudia uh, or, or earlier in chat or it might have been, uh, I'm not sure if it was David. Uh, could, uh, someone said that um, habits and routines are really helpful. And for me, that's really helpful. Like having a morning routine, having a time that I'm in bed by, those kinds of things make it so that mm -hmm. I'm not just like kind of just going and, and, and like starting my day in a certain way and scheduling, like those sorts of things uh, have been super, super helpful for me. So yeah, it's kind of like, it's kind of like doing some work ahead of time to make sure that I can at least catch myself. And then after that, I think I talked about it a bit before of like uh, either journaling or going for a walk. If I kind of like just keep, <clears throat> you know, like just staring at something and cl glazing over, I need to like reset talk to myself a little bit on, on, on the walk. Once again, I'm a big fan of talking to myself. I go like, all right, what do I need to do? All right. I need, I need to get that blog post going. What stopped me from doing it? Um, I don't know. Maybe I don't, I, I feel like I don't know the topic well enough. All right. So we're just going to look into it. Maybe I'm going to research for five minutes. Like just, just talking to myself, like problem solving out loud helps me come out of my, my mind where everything's scary and I just talk it out and things are better and I can come back kind of reset. So that's been that's been helpful for me. Do you want to move on to this one? I sir, I don't have anything to add. I think you've cool. done a great. Just wanted to give you great the job, opportunity, Mr. my friend. Um, cool. D David asks, uh, did you find framework tools that helped you? The Eisenhower decision matrix really did wonders for me. Yeah, I'm familiar with this. Are you are you, are you familiar with this? I'm not. Um, but I'm also not someone who does like. Uh, like pro con lists or like, it's just not how I tend to be very um, gut driven. Um, I'm like Winnie the Pooh, just kind of bumbling my way from one pot of honey to the next. Got it. Um, and it's fine. Uh, I'm okay with that. Yeah. I think it's yeah. very the... um, so <clears throat> the Eisenhower matrix. Um, Imagine if Neo was played by the general of the armed forces uh, in World War II. Um, that's what the Eisenhower okay. Matrix is. It's sick. You'll never look at the original Matrix. No, no. I, 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 I wish it was that. I really <laughs> wish that's what it was. I can't tell you how disappointed Neo, I am. Neo, but it's Eisenhower. It's so good. Um, right. No, so it's you, you just draw a grid, and um, the, the, the axes are the urgency and the importance. So like when you've got 20 right. things, this is really helpful where it's like, all right, what's urgent and important you do. And then everything else. See where these fall these. apart for me yeah. is um, I, I don't want to say I can never distinguish like which things are the more important things to be focusing on. For me, my bigger problem is I know what I'm supposed to be focusing on. Got it. It's just not interesting enough to compel me got to it. focus yeah. on it. All um, right, and that's then, usually where I fall flat. This I I find helpful. Have you seen this sort of thing? Oh, you're making me do math, Alex. Sorry, Come on. everybody. Uh, uh -oh. Come on. Something's oh, okay. Chrome just crashed on me. All right, I did not like that. Uh, I don't know what happened, but yeah, it's, it's not just me. It's Google. Chrome Chrome crashed. Anyway, uh, so the. <clears throat> I'll, I'll, I'll bring it up here. That's fun. I, I, just don't, I don't want to risk the rest of the computer. I'm, I'm still here, right? Yeah, okay. Uh, procrastination. So basically, it was just like um, procrasti per the procrastination equation says that um, expectancy times value over impulsiveness times de delay uh, kind of adds up to or like 
it equates out to how much you're going to procrastinate it. So if, um, if you need to do something, you need to find out where in that equation you are lacking. So like, is there a big delay on, uh, th th this, this project? So like, is it pushed off to the end of the semester kind of a thing? And is it like, if it's a big thesis thing, you can procrastinate that because there's such a big delay instead breaking up into like small, smaller due dates, or do you expect to not really succeed at it? Let's, let's change that. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, just if, if anyone wants to Google, it's it, it, breaking. One thing you just mentioned, breaking things up into small parts, um, uh, has been really, um, really helpful for me. Uh, that's something that Got took it. me a long time to kind of really have click. Yeah. That's one thing that I got from the GTD method with David Allen that like, I was like, Oh, yeah. the next actionable part, that's really helpful rather than just seeing like, you know, do project for anybody who likes the idea of GTD, but finds the, um, the implementation overly complex. I really enjoyed Zen to done by Leo Barb. Ooh, uh, heard of this. I can't, I forget his last name. Uh, but he was a productivity blogger way back in the day that came up with this like minimalist version of GTD that focuses on like picking your like three to five big rocks for the day. And like, okay. it, he kind of frames everything in the context of Zen Buddhism, but, um, okay. uh, it worked well for my, um, uh, my ADHD brain. Nice. That's <clears> cool. <throat> yeah. I, I had not heard of that. I just pulled it up. I will right, we'll check that out. Um, Jim asks, uh, how do you find laborious tasks such as waiting for new pipelines to run or fail after 30 minutes when you're in the hyper-focus zone? They are killers, I feel like. What do you think? Sir, you're talking to the vanilla JS guy. I don't, I don't do builds. I don't. Well, just no, like I'm just waiting kidding. for anything. It's just like, uh, <laughs> it's just, a, um, I, I should go check, check Twitter right now. Like that's, that's always. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm kidding. I do have a I do have a build process, but um yeah, I've been in corporate environments where like builds take upwards of 30 minutes to run and uh it it's um the last place I was at that had a build process that took that long was a fun workplace. So that was the perfect time to get up and walk over uh... to the foosball machine and grab a free candy bar and just joke around for a half hour and not get work done. Yeah. Yeah. And then get told and, you can't work from home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was that place. Cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. Those, those absolutely kill me, Jim. I, I feel like I, I almost need to have some, I, I, I don't, I don't have a good answer for this. Um, I, I have not cracked this code yet. When things like if an NPM thing takes a while to install, like a minute or something, mm -hmm. I'm gone. I'm just like, let's go, let's go look at the news. Let's go look at Twitter. Let's go check my email. Oh, I got an email. Yeah. All right. I should, I should, ah, oh, it's Christopher and Nandy guy sends out an email every day. I should look into this. I should read this. I should. <laughs> so yeah, I can just be gone. And then 20 minutes later, come back and like, oh, the build or, or the, uh, the install failed. I mean, okay. So they could, you know, so I don't have a great answer. If anyone does, I would love to hear it. Um, yeah. And coding in pearls. Thank you for, for for stopping by. I appreciate it. Um, and Andre, good to see you. Some fantastic people here. And thank you, Greg. Um, was there anything else that you wanted to add to this? No, bit? other than yeah, yeah. It's, it's tough. It's awful. Yeah, it's it's really hard for me to like could have to wait. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Do you limit how many things <clears throat> you want to do in a day? This one's from Monica. Yes. Yeah, I try to keep it to. Um, uh, three ish okay. big things. And then maybe there's a bunch of smaller ancillary, like gotta just like make a quick phone call kind of like things. So maybe I'll have like five to seven things total. I need to get done for the day. Only one to three of them are like big meaty things that take up a meaningful gotcha. chunk of time. Uh, and that's for me, my upper limit. That's also a concept I stole from that thing. I was just talking about Zen to done, cool. um, where, uh, Leo talks about this idea of like your three to five big rocks. Um, Got it. Uh, and then you stack a bunch of small pebbles on top of them. Um, that's nice. all I got. Yeah. 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 Um, no, th that's cool. I, I feel like there's so many little systems that people have come up with. Um, there are two more that came to mind when you were, when you were saying that one's bento and it's, it's like, you have like one, your, 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 your meat 
and then like a side and then like small things so like your 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 one big task like a, a medium task and then like just your basic habits throughout the day and then there's another book that I that I liked but I never like stuck with the system called Make Time and it's kind of just like you just have like your one focus for the day and like you kind of like just make sure that you you make your progress on on that one thing one one system that's been working for me lately just in terms of like a mantra is uh eat eat the frog if you're familiar with that or like you you wake up and you do like that thing that you've been dreading for months like for me it was just like i would put this thing off for months and doing it first thing in the day is just so awesome to just get up and like all right let's just get it done let's just get it done first thing and then the rest of the day you just feel like like there's this weight off your shoulders uh Mm -hmm. that's been that's been a really helpful thing i'm not sure like I've, i've heard that people with adhd can struggle with like that big stressful thing. But I think that's also just like a, lots of people struggle with that, but that has been, (laughs) that has been uh, wonderful for me. But yeah. Was there anything else that that we wanted to get into or did, did you want to add anything more? No, no. Um, I guess the only other just kind of point of note, I think I mentioned this a few minutes ago, but um, uh, go make things.com slash horses with ADHD. I will have, um, Links to various things that we've talked about and other stuff I've written about ADHD. Um, uh, I'll make sure that all gets kind of jammed in there um, so that you, including uh, this Zen to Done stuff. Awesome. Uh, so if, if anybody wants to check that out, they can. Appreciate it, Chris. Um, yeah, and let's plug uh, mm-hmm. your other stuff because you have... Okay. Well, so, so first off, you write a, a newsletter. Is it every single weekday? Yeah, Monday through Friday. Um, so impressive. Uh, except when I don't feel like it, uh, I've given myself a little bit more, <laughs> a little bit more freedom to skip days every now and That's then. Good. But it's generally it's Monday through Friday um, uh, every every week. Um, everything I do, by the way, I've I've come to realize that like the structure of everything I do is very ADHD driven. So the emails are really short; they're like a three minute read. Um, uh, I, they take me like fifteen minutes to write, and that's about it. Um, awesome. I also have a series of self-paced books and courses that are very narrowly focused. They're supposed to be like, learn a thing in an hour and then get on with your life again because ADHD. Um, and they're very like, uh, like pragmatic. Um, so I, I, they don't have like a lot of fluff. I'm not trying to like hit a word count. Um, and then um, I have a project-based workshop um actually the next one runs um in october registration for that will be opening up in like a week or two um and that is uh specifically uh focused on um you know uh if you like you're starting from scratch like one of the things i hear all the time is like oh i memorized all these things but i can never figure out how to like actually like start a new project from scratch and so it tries to address that problem um where you get a few lessons, you get a project to work on and they kind of build on each other. So over time you go from like really kind of minimal, simple, get started to like more complex. Um, uh, It's about building habits, if you will. Nice. That's a way to, way to loop it back in. Um, Yeah, yeah, there we go. It's all about them, them transitions, Alex. (laughs) (laughs) Smooth segues. Um, Yeah. No, but that, that is, yeah, you, you've been making, um, such top quality t- content for years. I found out about you times uh, many times over just from Googling um, <clears throat> and finding your things and finding your things and like, oh, this vanilla JS guy keeps answering all my questions. Um, <laughs> and it's probably as soon as I started adding JS to it, it would come up. So it was perfect. Um, all right. But uh, I did want to plug, uh, that's funny, the, the Discord doesn't have like any kind of message, it just says front and horse chat. I need to make that a little bit better because that's kind of lame. But I meant to say, um, folks who who got dropped off here, either from Jason or from uh, our friend Finite Singularity, or even from Chris, uh, we 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 don't always talk about this stuff in the channel. I I, I don't want to make it sound like the, the Discord is like an ADHD support group or anything like that. But um, we're very accepting of that kind of stuff. Like I I, I try to make it. Um, as welcoming and everything as as I can, and Chris, you're you're super active there, and we love having you. So, I, I, I appreciate you hanging out there all the time. Um, I appreciate you having me. That's, that's a lot of good people. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 
kind of my favorite place to to chat with folks but that might be I'm, i might be biased i don't know but mm. cool well folks thank you so much for hanging out um yeah if, if, if you have any more questions or this uh reminded you of anything or yeah if, if we didn't get to something we'd, we'd love to hear it in in the discord or reach out to us directly or whatever because uh the this is going to be an ongoing chat. This is not like, and we've reached the end and uh, there's nothing more to learn. It's like, we're just, we're making it up as we go and would love to hear uh, what resonated with you, what didn't, whatever. But thank you so much for hanging out with us. And uh, yeah, Chris, you're always welcome back to chat, ADHD, JavaScript, whatever. Would, would love to have you back on sometime, buddy. Nice. Thanks for having me, Alex. Of course. Take let's care. go uh, find somebody to raid. Take care, everybody. Thank you so much. Bye.